Three, two, one. And I think we're live. Mr. Northern Exile, how are you doing? I'm okay, man. How are you? How are you? I'm going to click my uh, intro off because I'm not a professional YouTuber. And let's keep going. Oh, there we go. It's gone. Brilliant. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when that happens. I've, I've, I've done this before. I've sat there for like 20 minutes and all they can see is my name going up on the screen and off again. And oh, just, fair enough. You know. do you want to redo it? You you redo it? No, no, it's fine. Go for it. Oh, okay. All good. Okay, okay. I wasn't, I wasn't sure if you were, if you were like, oh no, the the, the Omnis has forsaken me. The no, mate. Is no, no. I, I I roll with it. <laughs> I roll with the punches. If anyone knows me from my channel, you know I'm too lazy to do other cuts, so I just keep Love going. It. Love it. I Love I it. screw it up I and I keep going. Fucking thing sucks. We'll do it live. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. So I guess I should probably explain a little bit about well, you know why we're doing this and and who you are a little bit for the for the people that might be watching. This Go for it, my man. Channel. Yeah. So uh, we've uh, recently added a few videos on my channel, little story videos. The time I made a girl cry, the time a guy threatened me with a crossbow, and uh, I realised that you know I started a lot of people enjoyed that kind of content, and then obviously the almighty YouTube algorithm in its infinite wisdom decided, oh, you've created this kind of stuff, you might want to watch this kind of stuff, and so it started suggesting some videos for this uh, crazy guy called Northern Exile. I started watching some of your stuff, and it was all about hobby nightmares and some of the crazy stories that have, like you've you've experienced yourself and other people have experienced. Yeah. In this in this this thing we call Warhammer 40k, so that's what your channel's all about, right? So yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about your so, channel and how you got into 40k? So how I got into 40k? So going all the way back, I started when I was in high school, generally with two really good friends, and uh, we went in from there. The normal story, really. It only gets really yeah. interesting when I joined Games Workshop. Um, because you were the chosen one! Obviously, you that's were meant when... to destroy the system! That's when... Point them. That's when... Exactly, yeah. That, my, my friends had that conversation with me so many times. You're like, my, you, oh. nobody moans about rules more than you. Why would you join Games Workshop? Yeah. And my response was, you know, it's better to fix the castle by pissing out than it is to, by pissing in it, you know? And, <laughs> and I didn't know how low on the wrong I would be. And when I found out, I was like, oh, right, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna change fuck all from down here. Um, yeah. But yeah. no, it, it, it genuinely, I will say this to anybody watching now, uh, as a boilerplate disclaimer, uh, working the Games Workshop, if you can get a good manager and a good store to work for, it's the best job in the world. If you don't have rent to pay. If you're living at home, or you're living with a partner, <laughs> oh, no. or, 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 you're, or you're just you know going through life and you just want a bit of pocket money. It's the best job in the world. The minute you're relying on that job to pay the bills, or you're on your own in a store and you have HQ breathing down your neck, then it becomes a nightmare. And that's how hobby nightmares are born. So it was me. Right. Um, my channel even started with me. It, my, it was called Games Workshop, where my experience working the Games Workshop, my experience, and it was uh, yeah, I've seen that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was years ago now, and, and I did it just to get it off my chest, and then I closed the, the the channel, and I didn't come back to it for a couple of years, and well, not seriously anyway. And Hobby Nightmares sort of grew from that very organically. It was originally it was me getting loads of Games Workshop stuff off my chest. I'd come off a really bad breakup in the states and come home, and I didn't know what to do with myself apart from teaching, right. so. I'd come home and I, I'd I'd live about you know my time at GW and I'd I'd get in touch with lots of friends who still work there or who have left and I'd, they would remind me of little things that had happened since I, when I was there that I'd I'd suppressed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> through, well, it's, through, it's crazy that because yeah. I remember watching your original video mm -hmm. and then it took me it was when YouTube started to just and I watched that years ago and I think everyone watched that years ago so it's, it's mm -hmm. quite a famous video within the Warhammer community. Mm -hmm. It sort of definitely was one of the first because back in the day, GW, GW didn't do any of their own bloody publicity. So no, no, I, I think that I was think, at the very end of their silence period. Was, was on that yeah, day. yeah, and, I, and, it, and it took me a, a moment or two when when YouTube started suggesting me your stuff, and I started going on naturally, sir, so going on my binge. Or, you know, when you find <laughs> a YouTube you do, yeah. like you like, you binge all the content, right? And it took me like I was like three or four videos deep, and I was like. I think I recognise this guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that's when I was like, right, you know, uh, it, you know, we need to we need to do a collab because you definitely, you know, I feel like uh, we've got similar sort of uh, mindset and similar sort of people. So uh, I was like, let's reach out, let's do something here. Yeah, man, thank cool. you. Very Sorry, much for doing I interrupted it, yeah. you a little bit there, but you know, no, it's just, okay. Uh, um, wait, what was this? What was it? Oh yeah. Um, you can all, if, it's, if it's complimentary, you can interrupt me all you like. Um, <laughs> so like, yeah, I think from there we went and. 
started Hobby Nightmares, and that was when I, I actually ran out of stories. Like I'd gotten to the end of my time. I was like, I've got nothing yeah. else to say, and it was quite a. I remember doing it one day. It was I think it was like last year or maybe the year before where I got to a stage where I was like, I don't have any more stories. It's all off my chest, and it was such. Yeah. And I started therapy at that stage, and, and my therapist was like, Man, that's such a really cool thing you're doing, and it's going to really help you. You know, go through all of your memories and stuff, and I br- and brought a lot of relationship stuff into it. I've started giving advice on that because I've been through some shit and I've I've done some yeah. shit and I've not, and I've and I've been a victim of some shit, and it's been really good to go through that as well. Because the hobby, I think my channel sort of morphed into like um, soft. It's very soft. So I, I deal with all of the um, safe or spec tactics deals with hard power, like yeah. you know codexes and rules and stuff like that i'm more of the soft side i'm more of the how does right. it feel to be in the hobby who who are the ah, people in the hobby you know that kind of a that's thing that's the usb that's the, that's the angle that's the stick that's, yeah i guess i like angle, that yeah. i like that yeah, yeah. yeah i like that so it's because as a content creator you've got to have that usp yeah you know and that that's really cool because like, you're right no one really talks about that kind of stuff and i think it's probably because a lot of nerds and i use that not in a derogatory i consider myself a turbo nerd yeah you know? sure sure and, and uh, a lot of people are very analytical and they don't really uh, they don't really talk about the feelings and stuff and actually it can be quite important so it's kind of interesting that you've got that and uh, I think that would be that's very interesting it's quite I think it's probably going to be quite valuable to the community I, I, I think it's cool that um, I, I'm seeing a lot of people in my own community who are very analytical as you say uber nerds mm. um, yeah. And the amount of those people who've come out of their shell a little bit and they start sending memes to other people and they start come and they yeah. start telling jokes that they would never come up with normally and it's like okay you're a, there's a person underneath all that you know you, you, yeah. you, you know, i've got a lot of autistic people and, and other people like that in, in my community who are who are very quiet and they express themselves through 40k it's their mode of saying you know this is the kind of person that i am which is yeah, yeah that sounds yeah. weird but it is it, it's how they do it and they've started to actually speak normally and be like no no let, let's have a little chat about this and about that and about culture and about some of those things go off the rails, of course, the, the mods come in, but like aside from that, it's just really cool to see people come out of the shell a little bit and yeah. maybe we get away from the stereotype of... I, and I, as nerds, we don't really have... One thing I do come across is the amount of people who say to me, I've got no one to look up to. I've got no one, I've got no big brother, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, a lot of us nerds didn't really have... We weren't lucky enough to have very strong male male representation in our in our in our lives growing up. I, mean, I don't know yeah. why that is, but it just is what it is. And so they've treated the channel kind of like that. You know, they've gotten grooming advice on, you know, how to how to wear clothes, how to shave, how to do all these other things from the channel. Just you know, just through osmosis of me talking about it or me directly saying, you know, get a watch or something like that. You know, to be blunt, you know, and it's, it's just kind of that's where we are with the channel. It's very. I do do law, but I mainly focus on the, on the life of the hobby and what it's like being here and what it's like actually being a part of it. And it almost sounds like the, the, it's almost the, the focus on the people. Of the it hobby. is, yeah. It's, it's it's on the people, yeah. Because like as a, G, as a GW manager and, and uh, I manage the local store as well, a local friendly game store. Um, you've got to be that way. You can't. I can't. I, when I started working at Games Workshop, I would go in there with a very, oh man, you know this unit's so overpowered and it's got all these cool things that can do and awesome. And my manager just took me aside. We never really got along, but he was right in a few things and he was right in this. He said, dude, you're not going <laughs> to sell... I was right. It was it's top clock right twice a day. Exactly, yeah. He said, dude, you're not going to sell naff all talking like that to a customer. I went, well, right. but they play this game. Yeah, they do, but they they know all these rules. And a mum who comes in, you can't just say... What, what the armor penetration is on a thing they'll think you'll think she's trying to you're trying to chat her up or something you can't say that oh, yeah, you've got to yeah. just <laughs> you've got to just like look at the person and say what do you think is cool why do you think that's cool and get to know the person and yeah you can't yeah. run a games workshop store um thinking like a gamer unfortunately it, it just does, it won't work you know and uh no. i've sort of taken that mindset and said well what if we made a channel like that where we we got to know the yeah. people behind the people behind the armies you know, like, people like step foot, the people that are going to step foot in a store. Well, you, you know, going to search for a YouTube, a Warhammer YouTube video. Exactly. I mean, I mean, you know, all of these stereotypes about the, the tournament gamer. You know, he's he's a neck beard. He's, he's naturally got... sir, be, being one. I, yeah, I exactly. embrace. I embody these stereotypes. Exactly. He's got, he's got a calculator <laughs> there and all that. But the thing is, like, the thing is, what what I'm trying to do is, is a lot of those people will come on and they'll give me a hobby nightmare about the different things that they've done in tournaments or different things oh, that they've God, seen or done. 
got a taser. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. G- please do. I'm, I'm, but I, I, <laughs> I just, uh, I'll finish this. But I, it, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just getting to know the people behind that, so that other people go, oh, tournament players aren't all math hammering douches. Or if they are, they're, they're together over there and they're doing it over there. That's not, that's okay. You know, yeah, I'm getting yeah. that kind of a, a feeling out there because we're all in this hobby together at the end of the day. And if we're not, then the hobby goes away. That's just yeah, what it is. Yeah. Look at Wizards of the yeah, Coast. We don't want to be that. So let's, no. let's be this. <laughs> so what were you going to say I, that sounded like it was going to be interesting? I was just going to say, I'll just give you an example of um, one of the stereotypical tournament people that you uh, that you people you know, have in their head when they hear about tournaments. My uh, my brother once, me, my, me and him and a couple of mates went to a team tournament where you, you it's, it's not a doubles or tournament or anything like that. You're all playing singles games, but mm-hmm. your how you do as a team determines if your team won that round. You go through to the next one kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Who you going to pair up next time? Um, and my brother played against this guy. And my brother just he's just not a he's he's a very he's a good player, but he's not a meta player. So he will find an idea that he likes and he will make it work. Mm-hmm. And so he had, a, a, this was before Dark Elder were any good, um, or maybe they'd just come off being like good in ninth edition, they were now on the, down, on, the, on the downward slide. But anyway, and he had this full witch cult biker army. There wasn't a warrior in sight, there wasn't uh, anything that didn't have witches related to it, it wasn't in sight. And he won a couple of games there, and then he played against this guy who was using the most utterly cutthroat custodies list. Mm. And this guy, this is this is a new phenomenon, and I don't know if you've encountered this in your time. This has been, I think with 40K going a lot more competitive, I nicknamed it like a T-sport rather than an e-sport, like a tabletop sport. Yeah, okay. This guy was wearing like the, the branded like football jersey. <laughs> yeah, like, like Vanguard Tactics doing all that. Sort yeah, of stuff. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and he, it, well, he wasn't Vanguard Tactics to be clear. This guy was a yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. And, um, and after we beat my brother, he started like instantly like going into like, oh, you could have done this here, this here, this here. And he got his, he got a business card out with like his coaching oh, service no. and gave it to my brother. And my brother just looked at him and went, I've been playing this game for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that oh, on. It, to be fair, the comeback oh. of that was going, yes, and you lost. So here's my card. Yeah, I mean, I suppose, yeah, yeah, but I think the point yeah, was that, that it's like... was a horrible thing to do. They it do was just, my, I just, I, I was over, my brother said it's the most cringe thing he's ever come across in 40k. To be fair, you will get that, oh. like, you do get them, though, they, they are in the hobby, those people are definitely here, and they, and they don't mm. give a shit, they, they don't, they seem to not have a, a cringe meter. Um... I think people have got to, if they're trying to make a business out of something, Exactly, yeah, you can't, you can't afford to. You've you got, you got, you got to push, right, you got to push. Exactly. It's a bit like, um, but speaking of pushing, I suppose being a one thing I would I think a lot of people would be interested to know about um, is being a GW manager. Yeah. And pushing product. Now I know you've you've Ugh. watched my video on Dave the Dickhead. Yes. And uh, yes. I wonder if there was anything in there that whilst you were watching that video you thought, oh my god, I've it's like I'm real. I'm, I'm it's like I'm back. There, um, do you know what I mean? I, Not with I, you personally, but with maybe other GW managers you've seen in the past. All right. So um, that video hit home so much. <laughs> is that I, I had to stop watching it three quarters of the way through. So oh, I, no. I was literally just like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I, I <laughs> cannot listen to this because this has happened. What you what you said in that video was like the A1 version of Games Workshop douche. Like, that was literally a right. uh, GW douche. Um, again, like the manager I worked for, I don't know what he's like now, but back then he was one of these people. He would upsell you, right. upsell you, upsell you. And he would literally dry hump you out the out the front door if you if he couldn't tell you anything. And he wasn't like yeah. a space marine centric person, um, but he was a space wolf player. Just going to put that out there. Uh, just just put oh that out dear. there. Uh, so like, he would literally like if you came in looking for one product, he would he would try and shove it down your throat. You need more than that. You know, you come in for your you come in for like one uh, fire team of tau. I just want a tau. You know, uh, uh, what are they called? Fire warriors. I want a set of yeah, fire yeah. warriors. Well, well, you want this fifty pound set then? It used to be the fifty pound star collecting set. You want that instead? Yeah, yeah. No, no. I just want this one. But yeah, but if you get this, you get like a more in there. Like, no, no. I want this one. I mean, I just yeah. you do that all the time. Like the upselling would happen. Um, he would look down on if you didn't sell things or, or buy things in his store. Pardon me. Um, he would start to look down on you if you'd come in a few times and you hadn't bought anything. He would give you this look like down his nose. You'd look down his nose oh, and be like, dear. 
Like, who is this person? Smearing How dare salt they be? The yeah. Um, yeah. And he would brown nose the shit. There, there was this. There was this. I'm gonna call them the Browns. They weren't the Browns. They were another name. But I'm gonna. I'm not gonna dox them. Um, okay. He would brown nose the shit out of this particular family who were very rich. They would come ah, in and he'd extenders. go. Yeah, he'd be like, "Hello, the Browns. Hello," and he'd go over there like, "Hello, how are you?" Blah, blah, blah. Like, ignore everybody else in the store, and I'm just just lick this dad's ass the entire time he was in there. And invariably, he would spend several hundred pounds on his kid, and um, who was a who was a, a smelly little fat boy who did crimson fists, like <laughs> like like most crimson fist fans. Sorry, sorry. No, no. Um, <laughs> Not, like no, I'm I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But like, for like, no, no, dude, he dude. was. Uh, yeah. If you've ever watched, if you've watched my content, you know that I am I am uh, pretty, pretty pretty unfiltered. So don't yeah. worry about it. It's all gravy, yeah. baby. Like, I have a series of shorts on my channel called How to Get Cancelled. Well, there you go. I mean, I mean, so, <laughs> I mean, we are, I mean it's I, more, Don't worry about it. Like, this is, as we said before we started, this is a conversation. The vibe is like just bros just chatting. That's it. So yeah. go for it, man. So like. um with the GW managers, I guess that my one wasn't very good, and he wasn't very liked. There was there was complaints sent in about him, there was letters sent in about him, about his attitude, and he didn't like any of the gamers in the store. But Games Workshop was don't... This by, sorry, was this by the people or by other staff members? By, by the right. actual customers, like by the people in the store. Oh, and um, okay. But they didn't do anything, because at the end of the day, he's making bang over book, because he, he was a very good seller. He was he was good yeah. at his job, and I, I would never dispute that. He was just an arsehole of a human being. Um, but I, I sort of, when I wanted to become a Games Workshop manager, I sort of looked at him and said, well, I want to know if I can do this job without being him. Yeah. You know, I want to know if I can do this job with, without being him. And in my interview, I, I said, look, I, I've worked for this guy. And, and they all went, Whoa, f- <laughs> in the interview, like, like literally all the recruitment team, like, like they both went, you work for him? <laughs> oh, geez. And I knew I was in. That was it. They went, if he can, do, right. if he can survive there uh, this long. Like he's he's doing well. So th- this was a known entity. Like this guy was a known entity in the company. So they knew he was a problem. They knew he was a douche. Of how because he made bank, they were. He like... made bank, and he'd been there for upwards of twenty years. So he'd be, he'd be right. quite expensive to get rid of, and they like penny pinching. So it's not worth it. And wow. at the end of the day, he is writing a few things. If you populate your store with just gamers, you are not going to sell anything. You need you yeah. need casuals. You need new people. You need new blood. Uh, but the thing is, the way that you cultivate that new blood is that you make sure that those regulars are having the time of their lives, and if they're having a really yeah. good time, that'll just spread, and, and and parents will go, "Wow, these seem like really well-adjusted young gentlemen. They're playing a really nice game, and they're learning stuff. This yeah. is great." Um, what you don't want is somebody with the pants around their arse who smells like bo, and who just come from ma- yeah. from a Magic the Gathering tournament, standing around, you know, swearing because his roles didn't go very well. That's what you don't want, you know. And, and yeah, but like, which I have to be honest, I have met a lot of those kind of people in in games workshops yeah, I've I, don't know if it's, I don't know if it's uh, i don't know i don't know I'm, I'm not you know i'm not a, an expert on this i don't know if it's certain people gravitate towards certain areas of the community so i tend to find that you find a lot of those almost as you would say like stereotypical sort of old school like before before nerd culture became relatively mainstream old school sort of nerds they tended to congregate in games workshops and you had the people that as you said, were maybe a little bit more well adjusted. Um, yeah. Didn't go into the games workshop. And I've always been curious as to as to why that happened, but I don't know if you've got any um, Yeah, so so I, I had when I when I so to, so the demonettes, hello guys. Um they, they were the regulars in my store that I, I worked in right. as a staff member. And they were uh, teachers, they were lawyers, they were builders, they were they were zookeepers. Ah, there was one of them was a zookeeper. That's cool as fuck. And yeah, they were all normal guys. They would all take the piss, but they were all very respectful. They didn't swear. They were all all very they all dressed very well, and they came in utter chads and just had fun. And those guys were normal, and I was like, yeah, this, this, that's how a group should be. And they also yeah. gave that store a lot of money. They always made sure that even if they didn't buy something every day, which the manager wanted, that's why I didn't like them, they would always buy something every month. They would come in and get a box of Primaris, or, well, before then it was 7th edition, so they would come in and get, like, you know, a Devastator Squad or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, like, I wanted that in my store, and, and when I moved, when I actually got my own store, which wasn't too far away, a few of them actually came with me, which was really amazing. Nice. And they, they came yeah. with me, and, and they... And they uh, because my, my store, when I took over, was I, I, I gave people that I'm not going to name the store because there, there might be somebody imagine, managing there now. I don't want to get them into any trouble. But like uh, with me, the, the store that I was in, I would say this to other Games Workshop managers. Oh, I'm running such and such a store, and they'd go, "Oh Jesus, 
Like, <laughs> like that's, that's, that's the graveyard shift. And I was like, yeah, I know. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, what are you going to do? Um, but, like, as a Games Workshop manager, you, you definitely... I will say this. The day I became a manager and I walked into Bookman's Bar. Yeah. So... Uh, I walked in. It was kind of like the, the ending to Dirty Dancing when you, know, you get lifted up in the air and all that sort of stuff. So I walked yeah. in and they were like, here's the new guy. Cool. I'm, I'm still there with my dorky blue staff members Games Workshop t-shirt on. I'm like, yeah, I look classic. like an utter bellend here. What am I doing? <laughs> all these cool guys with their black t- you know, black stuff on. And my trainer sat there and said, do you want a pint? I went, no, no, I'm okay. And he goes, trust me, you want a pint. I went, all right, fine. <laughs> so I got a pint and uh, he gave me this pint. He goes, I've got a gift for you. And he gave me my 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 uh, black t-shirt and black jumper. I said, oh, brilliant. Hey, he goes, well, go and put nice. it on then. I was like, all right. So I stood up and started to put it on. He goes, no, no go to the toilet and put it on. All right, sorry, sorry, oh. sorry, sorry. I walked in, put it on, came out. And I was like, fucking, yeah, th- all right, I've made it. I'm here. Um, yeah. And the first four or five months of that job, six months, let's call it, were amazing. Uh, the second six months were awful, but like the first six months right. were amazing. Okay. Um, so what changed? Yeah. What happened? Um, essentially, if, you're allowed, if you want to say, if you want to share, obviously. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, I mean I've, I've done all this before on on other yeah, videos. Yeah. I won't go into too much detail, but essentially, I just started. I made a few faux pas that I didn't realize I was making. So there was things right. like I'd get somebody's name in an email wrong. Now, now that's my mistake, you know, and that's fine. But also, get over it, you know. Like, yeah, it happened once, get over it. So, no, I, so, so, sorry, sorry. Let me dig into that a little bit. Yeah. For those, for those of you that don't know, I, I worked in a very corporate environment for ten years before mm. I ended up basically after ten years going. Um, I need to make a change, and so I kind of get the sort of corporate vibe that you're you sort of describing here. Because mm. um, look, because. Go into that a little bit more. What do you mean, like, you got... Was that an email you so, got to a customer? So, no, no, I, this was an email to somebody... Higher up? No, this is an email to a higher up at King's Workshop. And uh, they asked okay. me for something, and I got... I went, hey, Gary, you know, it's, oh, it's a really polite email, but his name was, like, Jerry. I can't really remember what the specifics, the specifics were, but he okay. wasn't very happy. And instead of coming back to me, he went to oh. my trainer and told my trainer. Oh. And my, my trainer was now really annoyed, so my next training session came around. And me and, me and this guy had gotten on like an absolute house on fire right brilliantly yeah and i got in there he had the stern face and he was like listen you know there's somebody at head office who's not very happy blah blah and i was like i've been in this job for like four months like can you guys not just leave me alone and not say that kind of stuff because like you know what i mean imagine what kind of what That's kind heavy. of day I'm, I'm in i'm running a one person store but i've got to have my energy levels up all day i've got to open the store yeah. after this and and this happened four or five times where like i'd go to the to the uh, the training day, and uh, at no no part of the email did they say that you needed any of your official stuff because it was like a it was like a there was a training seminar, but apart from that, it was like a get to meet you sort of a thing. I was like, oh well, I'll I go mean, down I mean, how many fucking how many corporate bullshit meetings and training seminars are, exactly. know, are out there? You know, exactly. every single one. You know, you've got the after you've been for two, you stop bringing your notepad and pen because you realise no one else is. Exactly. I mean, so I walked in and, and <laughs> they were like, well, where, where's where are your games workshop duds? And I was like, well, I didn't didn't bring them like because. You know, it didn't say on the email that I needed to, and that they acted like I just come in and shout on the desk. So you know, <laughs> they then got, wow. got yeah, they, they, they then got me, uh, got me. A I've worked in places like this. I'm, 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 I'm feeling. I keep talking. I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm back there, my own place right know, now. Yeah. Exactly the kind of place you described. It's horrible, it. isn't it? Um, yeah. So yeah, like, so they, they went and got me a new T-shirt and came back, and it was all, all fine and dandy. And then, wait, um, wait, 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 they got wait. They got you. Yeah, they didn't they just went like, to, hey, oh, they went next to, time wear your stuff. They went and got you a t-shirt. They like, went to Warhammer <laughs> World. That a woman went, oh, and a, a poor, a poor receptionist went to Warhammer World and got a replacement oh. t-shirt and came back. I said, "There you go." I said, "All right, yeah, yeah, no problem." And I put it on. And That's it was like, so weird. But my, but my train looked furious. Oh, it gets worse. It gets worse. I've got. Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, I'm so, ready. Um, a few months later, I I went to another training seminar. This time in Leeds. I don't know why it was in Leeds, but it just is what it is. So I yeah. went down there. We were in a travel lodge, as you do, because why would mm. they put us up anywhere nicer than that? So we went down there, and everyone was in the bar, and I was like, "Right, I'm not getting caught out this time." I, I, I pressed my Games Workshop t-shirt, I looked at B's knees, right, and I went in there, I was like, great, cool, and I was like, nobody else is wearing the gear, huh, that oh, means wow. I'm doing very well then, good, you know, so I stand by the bar, and then one of the main managers comes over and says, mate, you can't be seen here with a pint in your hand and the Games Workshop t-shirt on, 
Oh, I was like, well, what? I just got, I just got reamed out. Okay, okay, I'll go back to my room and I, and I, and I sorted out. I came back out, but I again, I felt like a right dickhead. You know, I was like, well, here we go again. Um, and the worst one for, on the on the training stuff. I'm flying through these, but like the the worst one was uh, there was a there was I... one actually in Nottingham. And okay. my, my girlfriend at the time was doing a conference. She was giving a, she was teaching a conference in Nottingham at that stage. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So um, me and me and my other friend who ran Hamel Hempstead, Ryan, hello, Ryan, if you're watching, um, he does watch your stuff. Um, oh, cool. So like he was at the bar and he didn't drink that much, but he just had a, had a bit of a breakup. So he was like, okay, I'm gonna get myself absolutely sloshed. All the bars free. So I'm like, yeah, that's naturally, sir. Naturally, let's, you know, let's get one. Yeah, and we, we've yeah. done our training. Let's Push get it one. down with Brown. Exactly. Anyone who's, ever, anyone who's always study with Philadelphia might get that reference. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Stuff so, it down with Brown. Stuff it down with Brown. Anyway, so, carry on. so we're there, just you're chugging away, you know, and and the bar is a but the bar is a public space, by the way. We we got our games mm. workshop badges on, so we're getting free drinks. But the bar is a public space. Uh, yeah. My girlfriend comes in, and at the at the time. Uh, if she's watching, Lee, hello, um, ex-girlfriend now. Um, she's like stone cold, hotty, half Irish, half Filipino. You know the rest, right? You know, she walks in, looking like a million bucks, fresh out out of the. Gonna out, have to out, set out. this one to uh, eighteen plus if you keep describing. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but but she, she walks in, and I'm just like, yep, yeah, that's my girl. Look at that. And yeah, she walks, walks over, and we get talking. And we have a bit of a laugh, and we're going to go out on the town. Like all three of us is going to go have a few drinks, and we'll have a few drinks here, then we'll go out. And uh, I've got a bit more training to do tomorrow morning, but then we can go home. So, all the games workshop people start coming into the bar, milling around, and having a bit of a laugh. And then my manager, my trainer, says, pokes me in the shoulder, says, "A word, please." And I was like, "What the fuck now? Like, You're what, like oh. what is going on now? Am it's I like, wearing oh, the wrong not thing?" This guy, you know, you know, the wrong you know, thing? it's coming. You don't know what it is, but you know it's exactly. Coming. I could sense oh. it. I was like, "I'm I know something's. I know they're going to do something." So I walked over there, and he said quite loudly, pointing at my girlfriend, "What is she doing here?" And I was like, right. um, "She's giving a conference down the road, and we're having a drink here, and then we're going to, you know, the the comp. You know, I'm going out." He said, "Well, is she going to stay here?" And I was like, "Dude, I don't know, and it's none of your fucking business, really." Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, uh, maybe weird. she's got her own hotel, but maybe I don't know. I'm not telling you whether I'm going to stay in a room with my girlfriend or not. That's weird. That's not happening. Yeah. Um, and he said, well, if she's going to stay here, you need to clear it with the hotel because she's not really allowed to stay here because you know, we paid for all of the rooms and she really, shouldn't really be having drinks in your tab either. I went, she's not. She's paying for them. So anyway, thoroughly embarrassed. At this point, that's the moment where it broke for me when I was like, yeah, I'm not going to work here anymore. I can't. I, yeah, hate, I hate yeah. these people. Um, I literally hated these people. That's it. I was like, I'm done. So I walk into the... Into the, um, the uh, the lobby, and I say to the to the to the main man, right? This is this the head of retail of Games Workshop, and the hotel receptionist laid out the situation, and they're looking at me like, "What?" And I said, "So is she allowed to stay in my room?" And they went, uh, "Yeah, it's your room." Yeah, like, of course. Do you, do you not know how yeah. hotels work? <laughs> I was like, "I was going to say like, <laughs> oh, you got to clear with the hotel. The hotel, the hotel's like, what? Yeah. People staying here? Uh, we uh, did not know this was the function of a hotel. Uh, exactly, we thought yeah. it was just a, a bar with exactly. these extra rooms. Oh my god! Exactly. So um, that was my last, uh, my last straw. And I was like, okay, I'm done. And I've got, I've got dozens of, of tales from late. Um, wow. But but yeah, I'll save them for for another time. But like, I've got a few from. Um, from when I was actually a, a manager in the store, which were, um, which got a lot of traction. I just, uh, yeah, they're just, it's just so yeah. funny. Like the, some, some of the people you meet and they're coming into your store, and you, they, it's like that Simpsons meme. You know, when they're in the police car and there's a guy going past with like rollerblades and three, do, three poodles, and they go, ha, yeah. ha, tell you what, they only come out at night. It's that, that's <laughs> Games Workshop being a Games Workshop manager. You see so just, uh, the just dregs. Just a question, though. Just, just the, dre the dregs of, yeah, fair enough. But we'll, we'll come back around to that in a second. I just, yeah. I'm really curious because um, it's so... I want to drill down on this, the, 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 yeah. the last couple of stories you said, and just sort of ask yeah, sure. people questions about it. Because it's really, fa it's genuinely, like, fascinating. Um, allow me to live vicariously through you, almost. Yeah, cool. Um, did you, do you feel like there was a big disconnect then between you've got the store managers who will say, for lack of a better term, are sort of like frontline staff, maybe, you know, lower or down on the hierarchy. And then you've got the upper management, the, like you said, the head of retail, 
And then you've got everyone in the between there, which seems to be actually causing the problems. Um, or would you say it's, or would you say it's, it's not quite. It's that a simple. mixture, but middle managers in any job are, are the scum of the earth. But like, as far as I'm aware, like I, every job I've ever had, the middle management's been awful. They've been the ones in the way of everything. If you just let, let the people yeah. on the ground and the people who've actually earned their way to the top get on with it, yeah. job done. You know, and Games Workshop's no no different really. Um, Nice. There were diamonds in there. There were like really cool people on at all levels, and and I would say Games Workshop for the people I met, at least seventy percent of them were, were top notch, really good people, um, who who you'd love to work for. But uh, it's just a shame that you know a few bad cooks pull the broth and all that. But mm. in terms of um, sometimes, and I, us being nerds, we're all going to know what this feels like. Sometimes you go into a group, right? You go into a clique of of friends, yeah. and they just don't get you right they just yeah. don't gel with you you've done nothing wrong they've done nothing wrong you just don't work yeah uh, together that happened to me in high school i've had it happen when i've been in a group and somebody else has come in and they haven't gelled it just happens right yeah. i i'm fully i fully think after therapy and after that that's just what happened to me I, I'm, and I'm not the first and I'll not be the last like there was a lot of other people there who left around that same time I did and who have spoken to me since have been like yeah that's the exact feeling I got is that we didn't quite match the we were dudes right we were dudes we'd go in there we'd talk some shit and, and if there yeah. was a hot milf in there we'd, we'd flirt with her right that's just what we do like we're just normal dudes but we happen to like Warhammer and we run a Warhammer store that's who we were whereas we weren't like for instance I got re I got shouted at once because somebody sent me an, an email saying, you know, oh yeah, sorry I didn't get back to you in time, you know, uh, I had Nurgle's rot. Ha ha ha! I'm like, I, I just when I saw him next, I was like, dude, like, I was taking the piss, like, laughing, is that like, dude, you're 37, <laughs> don't say yeah. shit like that on a corporate. Email. And he was like, oh, well, 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 I just I'm just having a laugh, and I was like, no, no, I'm I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm not I'm not being serious, like it's fine, you know, yeah. it's all good, man. Uh, but it's just funny, like, yeah, but he was people like that i hesitate to say drink the kool-aid but those are the people that they that were succeeding and were having all of the nods like there'd be a few times when i when i'd say an idea or ryan would say an idea or a guy who's called paul um a really nice guy who would uh, who runs a store in the, in the northeast he would say uh, an idea and people would be like what that's rubbish no no they don't say that and then another guy who's a brown noser will say the exact same idea worded slightly differently and get a standing ovation you know it's like oh brilliant that's a really good yeah that yeah. would happen a lot uh, in training and in and in other places where there were just certain people where they just didn't get us, they didn't like us. And um, since going to therapy, like my therapist said, something, uh, his name's Ryan. Um, he might watch. I don't know. Um, but he said, uh, "It seems like this is revenge of the nerds. It seems like people who've made their way in Games Workshop were uber nerds who got picked on in school, right? Who have had to watch normies go about their business their entire lives, and when they have a normies working with them, it's payback time." Ah, that's interesting. That's what I now think it is. I, I actually think it's payback time. I think a lot of those people have been abused by not people like me, but but normal people. As in, you know, I don't look like a troll. I, I, that sounds yeah. horrible, but you know what I mean. Like, like I don't look like I don't look like an uber nerd. I don't look like a neck beard. I, I act like a normal person. You know, I I, I have girlfriends. I, I do this. I do that. And 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 they, it just didn't wash. It, it, you are not one yeah. of us. Then you haven't earned your stripes you don't deserve to be here because you haven't gone through the suffering that we have and, they, and i completely you know i'm with them i'm like yeah dude like this is your thing but i'm a nerd too just because like i i don't look like i am i am a nerd you know and it just it, i just look a bit different i just don't look like you um I, i'm a nerd i am a nerd. yeah exactly yeah no yeah no I, exactly no I, again you, you bring up these references for every time they're spot on so like yeah I, that's exactly what i'm thinking like i think these days it's more of a these people have earned their way up at games workshop because they're obsessed with the with the with the product they're obsessed with the company and they now have a sense of belonging in games workshop mm. and they will fight to the death to protect that and the minute you so, go in there yeah. as a normal person, especially if you're criticizing a few, I, I did once or twice when I said, we shouldn't really do that. You know, like if it's like a yeah. price increase or if it's like a treating gamers like a piece of shit, I'd be like, eh, I'm not really yeah. sure I like that. And you would get looked at like, how dare you, you fucking traitor. I said, well, this isn't a cult. You know, I, we, we I should be say, exchanging ideas. Does it feel, does it feel a little bit, um, it sounds very familiar and like i said i i haven't worked for games workshop but a lot of what mm. you're saying 
um, is is strikingly familiar. And interestingly, I don't necessarily think it's unique to uh, Games Watch, but I think mm. you find those people that um, really, really embrace the, for lack of a better term, corporate culture. And those people, they live, they, they almost, they, they almost, uh, that their job, their, that corporate culture becomes part of their personality. And sometimes maybe they were already naturally, you know, they, they thought the same way into the culture, but some people adopt it. But it's interesting how it's it's those people that really, really give their, give almost their entire, almost their entire essence to the company they're working for will, will do better. And, and you know, in, in a, it's not necessarily surprising. You know, a company is obviously going to be really, really happy if someone is like absolutely mm. into it. But at the same time, if you're at the same time, you it's kind of strange if you you shouldn't be punished for not being that way either. So yeah, I, don't, I think it's yeah. kind of interesting. I'm not really making a particular point. I'm just sort of no, I, I point completely point. agree, and and I think that Games Workshop take that to the extreme because it's such a an insular hobby in the first place where we're all in this together and we're all we've all got our friends and things and and there was a definite feeling of you know um, who is this guy or who are these guys you know and and why why are they normal why should they get to be here and have this amazing job there was definitely that kind of a feeling of like mm. you know you know what no, i mean like like, like I'm, I'm now getting my comeuppance because i went through loads of shit liking warhammer when i was younger and now i get to work for this company yeah and, and this is my reward you shouldn't be here because you didn't have to put up with the same shit that i did that was a feeling that i got a lot when i was there and it was just it was just kind of and i've only recognized that years later it's taken to that when yeah. i when i try and put myself again through therapy in somebody else's shoes it's like well they were like that why were they like that and the more mm. i've thought about it and the more I've, I've gone into it and what their behaviors were and what they looked like and how they acted with each other i'm like oh ah okay cool i, I can kind of see where they're coming from it's wrong yeah but i can see where the behaviors are coming from do you think that has changed with what i would call hesitantly new games workshop don't know. games workshop post seventh edition um i, has... I was there so i was there for seventh and eighth so um, do you think do you think after with with new you know for lack of a better term, new gw when gw almost went under with seventh edition hmm. um do you think that's changed at all as it's become more mainstream no. um i mean inevitably you've got like henry cavill coming in and all this kind yeah of stuff. do you think it's changed even Slightly, or do you think maybe it's been diluted a bit? You think there's more, there's a, there's a lot of people playing Total War games now, and you know, mm. you were saying maybe not within GW, but there's a lot more, maybe there's a lot more regular people that are aware of it. I mean, hell, when South Park starts making jokes about you, you know, you've almost made yeah, it, right? yeah, yeah, the Raven Guard so stuff, you, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, do you think, um, if if it even if it's only just started changing, do you think it might have become started watered down a little bit within the hobby in general or as all well within Games Workshop? So, like so within Games there. Workshop, I can't really speak to it because I've not worked for them for years now. So, like, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, when I was there, I was there in eighth edition and in, in when it's going strong and when uh, yeah. it, you know things were really, really kicking on, and I it was still the same then. I can't yeah. really see how it would be any different now. I know people who still work there, and I'm not going to speak for them, but I can only see what they've told me, and that's been like, no, it's exactly the same. We just keep our heads under the radar now. You know, like, we're, we're just... Ah. If you can get to the next day without getting shouted at or getting a nasty email from HQ, you're doing well. Um, which isn't great, but the thing is, once you've had your 20th email and you're six years into your job and you haven't sacked you, you know it's just all talk. You know, it's literally they're trying to they're trying to get you out of there because you don't fit, and they can't sack you because it'd be unfair, unfair dismissal. So they're trying to trying to get you to walk essentially. And if as long as you yeah. recognise that and you know that's there, you can just stay there for all, the rest of your career. And eventually they will give up. You know, I couldn't do it. I couldn't hack it. I was like, I I, I don't enjoy this hobby anymore. I don't want to do this hobby anymore. And fuck you, you're not taking my hobby away from me. So I left. And that was that was the end of my <laughs> that was the end of yeah. my time. Um, and I went and worked for for a, a, a gaming bar in London for a bit, and, and it was it was fun. Um, and then I mean that doesn't sound like a, it doesn't sound like a, not 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 what, you're, what not your gaming bar thing. Obviously that sounds pretty cool. Mm. Um, I want to I'll chase you for that in a second, but um, it doesn't sound like a great uh, tactic. Just ignore the horrible emails that you get. Bombed yeah, out. I mean the it's thing not is, tactic, but, you know, situation I should say. Well, the, the other part of it is is that the, the the job itself is the best job in the world. It is like if you can get what, doing the store managing. Yeah, and if you can get the and, um, the right team around you and the right people. Like if you're a games workshop manager and you get the right person at HQ looking out for your interests, you're done. Mm. You're done. You're 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 Teflon. Nothing can touch you unless you do something heinous. 
like touching up a customer or something, like you're, you're not, they're not going to sack you. That's pretty bad. You know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, so like again, unless you do something beyond the pale, if if there's somebody at HQ who likes you, you're done. If you can get the head of retail on side or something like that on side, you're Teflon. They're nothing to touch you. Even even what if you can get one or two trainers on your side, that's it. Like because they're the ones who adjudicate who's in trouble and who isn't essentially. Um, so yeah, it it was all sorts of. Um, um, again, I I also made mistakes. Like I I was very. Whenever I got eventually uh, the first few times I was a bit awestruck when I was getting like disciplined for things I hadn't really done wrong, you know. Yeah. Eventually I started giving it back, and I was like, yes, I don't give a shit about this shit about this job anymore. So. Here is your criticism right back up your ass. There you go. And how would you like that? Because I'm a normal person. I can deal with confrontation. You can't. You're a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> like, I got yeah. that all the time. Um, and it was just like, yeah, it, it, when I left, it was more of a... I didn't come back to the hobby for years. I, I was done until the pandemic. And um, when the pandemic wow. came around, I started in the hobby again, yeah. So that was... that was. And funnily enough, um, I'll get into it a bit later on, but funny enough, like the channel started to pick up as I got back into the hobby, and it's yeah. always what I wanted the channel to be was was something to do with the hobby. It's always what I wanted to do. I did general gaming and stuff, and I did writing advice and things. I taught it for a while, but I really wanted it to be about the hobby. And um, it was only when I, I had that really bad breakup in the US. I it's weird when you go back on my analytics on YouTube. The minute yeah. the breakup happens, and I haven't done any videos at this point. The minute the breakup happens, my numbers start to take off, mm. and I don't know why. And I hadn't done anything. I hadn't uploaded sign, anything. Sign from the uh, from the gods. Uh, maybe, or yeah. Like, Getting monster, whatever you believe in. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not yeah. that kind of a guy, but maybe I don't know. But like, that's where the channel. That's why it's so special to me. Like, I love it. Like, I love everything that I do with the channel. It's really, really fun. And, and I and I read some. Like the one I'm reading next Friday is probably a, a two-hour behemoth of a saga. Wow. It, it, it's been taking ages to get all of the little, all of the parts and different aspects of from because there's three people who are arguing against each other essentially. You were all, that's yeah, crazy. Um, is your next hobby nightmares? Is that's the next. Video? No, the next hobby nightmares will be a Monday, but this is gonna be Fridays next week, so I can ah. I can touch it properly. But back to G Dub. Um, I no, I, I don't know what's going on in the hobby because. One, I'm not there. I know that it probably hasn't changed because, you know, the, the, the game itself hasn't changed. You know, the, the, the way that they're, they, they can say that they're for the fans all they want, but there's only so many times you can say that whilst your prices are going up and whilst you're trying to close yeah. third party retailers. You know, like they're trying to get rid of those third, third party retailers by pricing them out, and it's not right. And they only want you to buy yeah. Games Workshop products from Games Workshop. There's no, there's nowhere else they want you to buy them from. Um, you know, I, it's just I don't know have you seen I, much with uh, have you seen much with 10th edition what's your thoughts on so I played on five I played six games now 10th edition I okay, really enjoy it I really enjoy it um, one page rule still kicks ass I'm sorry it just does like, it, it's just yeah. better um, for me it's just better I, I'm, a, I'm a narrative guy I like telling stories on the tabletop um, I, I love watching people play 40k 10th edition I really like it as a 40k game you know, yeah, yeah. But I I enjoy one page rules more. I don't know why. It, it it just flows so much better. It's just got it's just so much more fun and balanced. And I know when the codex has come out, the game balance as it is now in in forty k will go right out the window. Because that's what. But well, it's do. already it's already giga fucked. It's already like. fucked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's already. Anyone who's oh, got an Eldar who's got an Eldar army is going to be coming in their pants oh. right now. But, you know, oh my days! Well, have you seen? Um, what came out today from Games Workshop? No, not yet. Oh, the uh, the king is dead. Long live the king is what I'm going to say. Um, they oh. have released their tournament guidance pack. And oh. uh, all I can say is I hope you like L-shaped ruins because Games Workshop does. Oh, shit. It's all ruins. Oh, my God. It's all mono, mono, you know, just like a monolithic style of terrain. And it looks really, really boring. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean... I mean... Like, I, I don't know. I, I, a tenth, a tenth has been okay. Like I, I've I've won three and, and lost three, but um, the what three that I've nice. lost have been absolute hammerings. But uh, mm. two by Eldar, funny enough. Um, Interesting. Yeah, nice. and uh, I, I I'm I'm enjoying it as I said, but I'm enjoying it as opposed to other 40k games. Like Seventh Edition was a fucking mess, an absolute yeah. mess. Uh, the formations were a cancer that should never come back to the hobby ever. It, they were horrible. I hated them. 
Um, I even hated they made it. If you're oh, you, 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 don't, harder, you don't like you don't like ten riptides firing uh, exactly. four times in it one was, turn. If your rules you don't like make it harder, 120 drones respawning every single turn. That's if weird. your Why rules you like make that? it harder for me to sell the fucking game in your store, your rules <laughs> suck ass. <laughs> they suck ass. Like like oh, and seventh was terrible. And I, I will die on that hill. I will die on that hill. I hated seventh. It was like it was the accumulation of third until seventh. Like like all of the worst parts of every edition brought forward to the next one until we have the demon child that is seventh. And and even seventh then seventh place. started off okay and then gradually became warped and horrible. Eighth is the only one that's kind of stayed the course, but even then the codexes just bloated the shit out of the game. We had Codex creep throughout it, and it got ruined. The first three or four months of 8th were probably the best time in the past 10 yeah. to 15 years, in my opinion, yeah. of the hobby, because you had this new game, yeah. complete reset, and Games Workshop couldn't fuck it up, because they could only do indexes, a like Grand Alliance yeah. indexes, and they can't really put broken combinations in there. So they, yeah. they, they were just really balanced. And then the Imperial Guard Codex dropped, and everyone's balls went into their throat and thought, oh my god, here we go again. And Don't know what you're talking about. There we were again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, we we had a guy called Rick, and he, and he wore this like leather jacket, and he'd come in, and literally when that codex came out, he just walked in and just smiled at everyone, and everyone just looking oh, at him like, man. go, go fuck yourself. <laughs> like no it's, one's it's, playing it's, you. It's one of those where pe people like guard every edition get yeah, about yeah. three months of being. Utterly broken. Yeah, yeah. Or being, being, you know, and, and, and there's gonna be a lot of people watching my video now and be like, "We're fine." But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, they, they, uh, but that, but then GW just comes in with the biggest nerf hammer ever and just kneecaps the faction. It's like brilliant. Three years back on the shelves, boys. But uh, we had, we had, we had three months in, three years off. So, so did you basically. know in the studio, right? There's only, one of the only things I know about the studio. Is that mm. similar people write codexes edition by edition, right? Yeah. So you will have the Grey Knight codex, dudes. Yeah, you will have the yeah. Grey Knight dudes, you'll have the Imperial Guard dudes. And there are certain teams in there who are very partisan about the factions that they're writing. Hello, Matt Ward. <laughs> I, 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 people like that. And as far as I'm aware, the Imperial Guard dudes and one girl are anoraks. Like, they are real big Imperial Guard fans. And I think Good. that's why when whenever their codexes <laughs> drop, they're just like, fuck face brains! And this is like this yeah. huge, you know... We are the Emperor's true finest. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exa <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. We don't need all that armor. You know, our armor is faith. And, uh, they're, just, they're just frothing at the mouth while they're typing the code. It's like, it's like Jane, you've been in capitals. It looks like you've been in capitals for a while now. It's like, stretch that last guns! It's like, it's okay, we can't <laughs> Yeah, it was, exactly, yeah. And then you've got the, like, the actual GW guys going, yeah, we can't we can't have you be better than <laughs> Space Marine, sorry, so we're going to have to nerf all of this now. And, um... And uh, I think it's happened again. I, I still suffer for it now as a Grey Knight player. I still suffer from it from Matt Wardism because like that oh, happened yeah. in third. Was it third? Demon, uh, I think Demon it was Hunters. Fourth. Yeah, Demon Hunters in third, and then the infamous one was fifth. F was which, fifth, yeah. yeah. So like plasma ciphers, like oh plasma weapons. Exactly. Don't yeah. It's like oh brilliant. I, I think we had like like a phase a phase bracelet bomb that that one of the Inquisitors oh, could man. take, where it was just literally like see that Imperial Titan. Yeah, I'm gonna roll uh, four plus. It's dead. Yeah. It's, it's in my bomb yeah. now. It's like in the stasis yeah. bomb. Um, so yeah, like I, mem was, I yeah. remember seeing in, in fifth edition, it was I remember, it was not uncommon to just see fifteen Grey Knight Paladins and one character, one Drago, table entire, yeah. yeah, just 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 table entire armies, like battalions of guard, mm -hmm. companies of space marines, and the Grey Knights might lose three or four guys. Mm -hmm. That was it. Yeah, good well, old fifth edition. Well, I, well, I think. Um, since seventh, like I, I always like when I walked into it was in Durham actually, it was in Games Workshop Durham when I walked in and it's hmm. like uni and I was like, what army am I gonna do? And I just saw the Grey Knights and I was just like, oh, I can't do them. There's bit there, there's too there's too much too much knight stuff. And I walked yeah. away and I just noticed that I kept looking back to those yeah. beautiful silver boys and I go, oh, I got, and I just broke and went, oh, do you know what? Just give me give me some of them, <laughs> give me yeah. some of them. And it just yeah, it's been the love affair's been going strong ever since. Like I, I'll never, I'll never leave them alone. They're all, they're brilliant, and uh, they deserve true scale marines. Fuck's sake, they deserve yeah. bigger. No primaries for you. No for you. I know, I know. I, but they, 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 say that's not the, um, they say that's not the point of the of the upsurge in, in their size, though. Like yeah, they're slightly bigger, but like we're just making. 
bigger marines now. Even the firstborn are a bit bigger than the old firstborn. So give yeah. us those. Give us yeah. larger firstborn or, or like. We've seen know. the uh, the Death Watch, the Death Watch firstborn. Yeah. They're very. They're yeah, like the, the proto chunky. primaris. Yeah, yeah the chunky. Give us one of that. So, uh, yeah, that's fine. So what? So um, you're a Grey Knight player. That's interesting. Oh, I didn't actually, I didn't actually uh, put you as a Grey Knight. Player. Oh, Did you find um, do you, what what drew what drew you to the fact was just the aesthetic, or was there when you started reading about them? What was um, it? No, no. I, I mean, I knew they were a bit Mary Sueish, but like, yeah, uh, it, it was more the armor. And there was one piece of art. It was two pieces of art. There was one where. Uh, there's it's black and white sketching it's like a gray knight walking forward with a force held bird and he's got a demon's head in his other arm he's walking oh, sideways yeah. profile and i was like that's the shit and there's another yeah. one where there's there's corn demons all around and there's a gray knight with a halo above his head sweeping oh. a force held bird through a demon in black and white and i was like fuck that's amazing and no other i wanted to do marines because i've never done yeah. marines before i was an eldar player back in the day um, Mr. Glass Cannon in, in sixth edition, fifth and sixth edition, and um, collecting Grey Knights and Eldar. Yeah, in fifth edition. Man, you say you're an added player, but I'm getting something different. Wrong oh no, I, I, I was too young. <laughs> I was far too young to play Eldar. Oh, I, I was, I was terrible. Like I lost every game, and, and everyone was like really happy with me because they were like, "Oh, finally we get to beat Eldar because Northsea, yeah. brilliant." Um, <laughs> so I, it was, it was my fault. Like I was terrible at playing Eldar. But I get it. I get it worse both ways because I was playing a broken army and not very well. So the other person would be like shaking his fist in my face, going, "Yeah, finally, fucking space elves!" And I was like, "Fuck you, fuck but, you!" And you're like, "But they're I don't terrible." Know what the hell's going on? <laughs> but they're terrible. Elder are dead again. Like, I, I, yeah, I'd be going, uh, uh, "Spare." But like, I know I wanted, I wanted psychic. I wanted space marines. So that left me pretty much with my own chapter to make one up: Thousand Suns or Grey Knights. And Thousand Suns. Look ridiculous. Uh, sorry, Thousand Suns fans, but like, you know, the headdresses, come on. And <laughs> Grey Knights look like fucking Arthurian Knight with power armor yeah. on. Give me some of that, please. So that's basically what I. And that was it. I, I went from there, and, and the more hate I got at university, because I, I, I used to run uh, Nine Paladins and Drago as my center Death Star, Naturally. essentially. Yeah. yeah, at 7th edition. And they were so. With Sanctuary on them as well, it was so hard to kill. And uh, but Drago is pretty much unkillable because he'd go down to a two yeah. plus invulnerable save with Sanctuary on. Back and, in the day, two yeah. plus be rollable invulnerable save. Yeah, it would, it would just... people think ninth is unbalanced. They ain't got a fucking clue. no, 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 no. <laughs> like, 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 I got so much hate for that. But I was like, no, I'd love these models, and I've only got twenty of them. For God's sake, you've got a whole army of orcs. Cause you can't, you can't beat me. That's your problem. <laughs> um, but that these days though they would beat me because obviously we have objectives more are more of a secondary yeah. is more of a thing now which is why that's the case um, but yeah that, that was my Grey Knight fetish that's where it comes from essentially mm -hmm. uh, you know and uh, yeah do you um, do you find it's interesting how I feel like the, I feel the majority of people in 40k have a faction and that's their that's their love but i feel like recently with the rise of a lot more tournament play i mean you've, you've got literally people who who almost like wwe uh mm. presenters who's that's their full-time job it's like it's like oh my god the eldar coming in with the steel chair and all this kind of stuff oh my god, do you yeah. feel like with that we're seeing a lot more people that are not connecting to an individual army but are jumping around a little bit or do you think it's not though do you think that's just just within the competitive community. I, I, I think we are missing a little bit here, and that's that. Um, I don't want this to become a, a, a T sport, as you said, like yeah, before. Yeah. That was a very good. That was a very good analogy hate for how it's going. Hate depending on that, on that. Trademark yeah, and that I mean, Games game. Workshop want that. They definitely want that. <laughs> um, they definitely want that. They want a competitive scene, and, and I think competitive scene so, should be there. But I think the mm. reason why you start an army in, in 40k should be because you find that shit cool, right? Yeah. That that should be the first thing you do is. Like, say if you heard what I said there about Thousand Sons, you should be frothing at the mouth now, going, that's some yeah. bitch! Like, cause if you like Thousand Sons, because, you know, you're like, yeah, that those are my guys, I love their aesthetic, I love everything about them. That should be the reason why you get in. And then you say, cool, I want to go to a tournament with my Thousand Sons. You, you create a really good list, really strong list, and you go and you see how you place. That should yeah. be the, the, uh, the... The way to do it now again yeah. how pompous how pompous am i saying this is how you do a hobby because you know it's a stupid oh, yeah, but, yeah. But, it's just, everyone, it's just, your, just your opinion that's exactly fine. yeah yeah it's just, just an opinion but like um i like the comp competitive scene should be there but the best competitive players i've come across when i ask them why do they do imperial knights or why do they do um eldar they don't say because they're broken as shit and i want to win they say 
or, or they don't give me some sort of breakdown of their rules. They go, oh, I really love the samurai aesthetic of the Aspect Warriors, so yeah. I just went and did it. And they give me all these really cool examples of why they're into them. And I don't want to move away from that. And I think it is with certain tournament people right now. It is going from. I've, I've even seen esports people migrating to 40k. It's weird. Yeah, actually, I've seen a lot. Yeah, I think I've seen like a lot of like gaming channels, like gaming review channels, yeah. are now dipping their toe into. Yeah, 40K. I know Angry Joe's doing it now. He, he's he's yeah. big into it, and, and it won't be long for he's on the competitive scene. And when that when he does that, he's putting together his own team and all sorts. So it's, crazy. It, it's great. Like, don't don't get me wrong. Like, play the yeah, game yeah, yeah. And, and be competitive. But like, remember. The magic of the hobby isn't isn't your plus two to your invulnerable save. The the magic of the hobby is, oh that shit's cool. I really want one of them, and you go yeah. and buy it, and then you go right. I've got this this thing now. I've got this like these 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 imperial guardsmen. I've got this you know uh, uh, carcassin unit or whatever. And you're like yeah, this is cool. And I've done it my own way. I painted it my own way. And now I'm gonna take it to a tournament and see. I'm gonna play with the big boys. That should be that should be the feeling mm. of a tournament. You're playing with the big boys. You're like, okay, right, we're we're yeah. we're gonna go see if my army's any good, you know, and and it might not be, but th but that doesn't matter. I'm only here because it's cool. And you see, you even lose most of the the bitterness of losing because you're there because your models yeah. are cool. You're not there because your rules are any good. You're any good as a player. You're there because you want to have fun. That, that's an interesting point you make there. Something I, I, not something I had considered until we were just like just like chatting. But the typical we we you sort of said at the beginning like. The typical hobby journey you got in with some friends you played a bit you know your army got bigger you found the faction you loved you started building up mm -hmm. and then you, you 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 developed a list that you loved and then you took it to tournaments and that is a typical hobby journey firstly you get in with your friends mm -hmm. then you get into a little bit of an arms race with your friends one of your friends and everybody goes and plays at a store somewhere gets his ass handed to him and learns something that gets the arms race going even further some people end up don't not liking that they drop out but the people that stay end up really getting into the hobby and, and inevitably you sign up to that local tournament and you get your asses absolutely thrashed and either you love it yeah. and that gets you the tournament bug or you hate it and you decide you know, I'm not going to play 40k anymore or you, or you stick to narrative. Do you, but that is the, I would say the long beard journey, people that have gotten to it traditionally. But do you think there's people now which are getting into it because like I'm going to start at the tournament. I'm getting into it for the tournament. I don't give a shit about think, the narrative. I think that's exactly what's happening. I, I think that's exactly mm. what's happening. Like, even in, in my own Discord and, and other groups that I'm part of, like it, there is a, a shift in the hobby now of, of people saying, well, what's good? What's in the meta? What are you running? Yeah. I, I hate that saying. What are you running? What are you running? <laughs> I'm not running anything. Like, I'm, I love Grey Knights. <laughs> like, I just think they're neat. I just think they're cool. Like, and yeah, yeah I've got, a, I've got a, a stonking list because I'm at a tournament, but I don't give a shit. Like... Like yeah. it's fine. I mean, but again, yeah, as you said, like it is the long beard way of doing it. But I think there are people now who are saying, yeah, like I'm running this and and I'm doing this, and and I have friends now who got their armies off eBay, uh, half painted. They don't bother putting any more paint on them, and they take them to events, and that's it. And they they get exactly the the units that are in the current meta. And when their current meta is no longer them, they sell them on again. They just sell yeah. them on, or, or, or they throw them in the attic, never to be seen again, until they come around in the meta once more. Um, yeah. And and that's a shame, and that that's why I think like the gaming side of the hobby is um, at least. I, I I think the painting side's the biggest, in all honesty. Yeah, I, I, the painting side. At, I agree. I think yeah. if you look at the, the, my metric for judging what's the biggest part of the hobby is who are the biggest YouTube channels out there, mm -hmm. and by far the biggest channels are hobbyists. You, anyone listening yeah. right now? You want to get big? You want to become a YouTube full-time content yeah. creator? Be good at painting and make videos about it because you'll be a, you'll do it overnight. And if you're <laughs> if you're female and also hot, you are definitely going to make it big as a, as a Warhammer person on YouTube. I'm telling no. you. Um, <laughs> I, know, I know that's a controversial thing to say, but it it's true. Like we've all got eyes, all right? They don't sue me. Um, <laughs> like it, it's it is it is what it is. Like there are a lot of red ne 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 next up next up on Twitter. Northern Exile cancelled. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> like, I can't cancel me. I'm Teflon. Like I, I can. People have tried. Like I, I say some shit. Like I, I when I'm when I'm doing my these hobby nightmares, sometimes I uh, something will just jump out my mouth and I'll go, ooh. Uh, well, I'm not re-recording it. Fuck it. <laughs> and I'll just leave it in, and, and away we go. Um, it's all right. They can dredge it up five years later when I've made it big. Exactly. Well, yeah. Again, <laughs> I, I think if that ever happens, it'll just be like one of them. Well, I didn't. I never thought I'd get here. And if you, if you, if you're not afraid to lose it, I took this out of the circle the other day, right? Well, 
because he was saying, "Listen." Oh know, yeah, I, I, uh, I do. You know I got a nick. It's very much a, uh, a, a, a banterous nickname. I've never chatted to him, but I call him the Outer Salt Mine. Yeah, he is. Very yeah, yeah. No, he'll, he'll love salty. that. He'll love that. He'll be like, "Yeah, that's that's me, bitch." Like, I, that, that's I do me. watch his stuff. I, I just, I just, I just nicknamed him the Outer Salt. Like, it's only, but I say, I, literally, that's just between me and my friends. I call him the Outer I, Salt. I, I, I tell you what, though, like when I'm in the mood to just be like, when when, I, when, when they've done something that annoys me. Yeah. Um, I'll know we'll do a video on it, and I'll be like, yes. I'll click on it, and I'll just be like, yeah, get him. And, it, and yeah, it's just really funny. And yeah, but he, he said to me the other day, like, I was like, yeah, you know, I got a bit of a bad response to one of my videos. It was like, oh, you know, it sucks. And he goes like, well, you know, why'd you care? And I was like, well, it's easy for you not to care because you you you're built not to care because like you you yeah. your income. Let's say for you, Mordian, right? Your income is now your YouTube channel. If you, if your YouTube channel gets doxxed by, by some rabid person who doesn't like what you've said, but you're not getting paid this month. That's it, right? Whereas what Outer yeah. Circle's done, he's got a really good job, he's got a really good career, and he comes on and gives his opinion about Warhammer. And in a way, that makes him even more trustworthy than us, I guess, because he doesn't need to give us good opinions mm -hmm. to get money or anything like that. He doesn't care. He just goes, no, I'll just say it. So I said, yeah, it's easy for you to, to, to stand up to that because you don't give a shit. You don't need YouTube. Where if I lost YouTube... That's about twenty five percent of my monthly income gone, you know. Yeah. If you lost it, that's a hundred percent of your monthly income gone. You're, you're full time. You're doing really well. I'd have right? to start selling the feet pictures for real. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> I, I do that recreationally. I don't know about you. I don't, oh. I don't give a shit. Like, I, my only fans is free. <laughs> yeah. I, I pay people to be on mine. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like yeah, it, it's just it, that's uh, the, the trials and tribulations of being a Warhammer YouTuber. But if you're, mm. I will say this right. And that sounded quite sexist before, but trust me, if you are a, a girl and you are decent looking and you want to get into this thing, the yeah, Warhammer being a Warhammer YouTuber, you will do well. Like, you will do well. Now, don't get me wrong, there'll be certain parts of it where, yeah, yeah because of your looks and all that, but if you know what you're talking about, we love that shit. We love new people getting into yeah. the hobby, and it makes us feel good to see people not like us going, ah, oh, this is cool, because it makes us feel more validated than going, oh, we made, we made a good choice. There are hot women here as well. You know, then that's what yeah, we want. Yeah. So come on in, come on in and roll some dice with us. You know, and um, I think it's a it's an interesting point for certain. And I think, um, I, honestly, when it comes to content creators for myself, I I and I mean this in the nicest possible way. I couldn't give uh, a damn if they're a uh, man, woman, yeah, small yeah. furry creature, mouse, enjoy. It just doesn't bother me. For me, it's all just like um, if you do good content, I like your content. If you don't do good content, I don't like your content. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally that's all it comes down to. It and. Uh, and I would, you know, and, and I'd say on, there's all, I, I do feel, um, I do sometimes feel a great amount of sympathy for some, uh, for, for female content creators, whatever circle they're in, because yeah, you have on true. the one side, you have the people that, you know, will, will, will creep on you or, or will, will love mm -hmm. you for your, for your appearance. Uh, and then on the other hand, you've got the people that are unbelievably toxic because you dared to be a woman in their space. Yeah, that, that does happen. And, and it, um, it completely, and and so it's it's very I I, oh, I feel like it's a big double edged sword. I think people who go in and say it's oh it's easy peasy, you'll just you know, you you'll go in there, you put a camera on, boom, you've made it. I'm oh like, no, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Deal, It is you are get for every flower getting thrown on the stage, you are getting a rock thrown. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm I'm not saying it it'd be easy. It's not gonna be easy. No, 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 I know, you need I know. To be able to stand up to the heat, but uh, yeah, but but the space is there for you. Is what I'm saying. Like there, there is definitely yeah. a an open market. I mean, uh, let's be mm. honest. For all the hate people get for like being hot women and in the hobby, how many can you name? I can't name well, very many. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, to be I, fair, I, I spend my entire day uh, making YouTube videos and, and uh, you know, hanging out with my cats. So I, I have no social awareness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, well I, I, I get it on my... Um, so, so there's two things. I, I, I hate this algorithm because if I search for one, like if I if I look at one slow motion yoga stretching video, right? Just one. Oh, I, I have was, one. Oh, of by, just by accident, obviously. One I mean, it just, it just no, happened no, it, to come across. It's not accident, right? Oh but it, but no. It, but it, it's one. A man of culture, I see. A man of culture. One, <laughs> one first slip, one, and my entire thing is first bombarded. Slip. Oh god. Bombarded with oh. these things, and, and like my mother has to walk past when she when she visits, she's like, "Oh, what are you watching?" No, uh, uh, this is just recommendations. Suggested right? videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, but because dear. I also watch hobby stuff. Right, those two things combine in the algorithm, and I see a lot of you know whenever a a new person comes into the hobby who's a woman, invariably they will be in my recommendations. But what I will say is is that a lot of people, in terms of like what we were saying before, and like 
you know, the actual stunners that are there, you know, like, like e-girls, right? You know, there are those people who, who do like video games and stuff and Twitch and things. We're not seeing any of them. And I think that's a really cool thing, is that we're not really getting any of the OnlyFans, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The OnlyFans crowd coming over it. It's mostly people who are dedicated to the hobby and they're like, I want to say some shit about yeah. it and I've got something to say. Yeah. That's really cool. And if you want to do all your OnlyFans stuff, and I'm not going to judge you, you go and do what you want to do. But like, yeah. we seem to be attracting like a lot of people who don't, I'm going to say don't look normal, but that's not right. You know, but they don't, they don't look like, typical nerds. You're not meaning it in a, you don't yeah. mean it in a derogatory way. Yeah, they don't look like yeah. typical nerds, which is a good thing, I suppose, but like... Um, Probably go mainstream, we were saying before, isn't it? Yeah, 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 it's going more mainstream, and I I have seen a lot of toxic behaviour, uh, either through Hobby Nightmares when I read it out, or mm. yeah, even even been people banned from my own Discord, because I've been like, yeah, that's beyond the pale, I can't be dealing with that, go yeah. away. And it sucks, it sucks, like, and even as a sometimes i do think like as, as a dude like i get some shit for my videos but then uh, there is a there's another female youtuber who is on my um she was on my uh my discord um kira very very nice girl but she has to go through she gets shit sent to her all the time like it's not great yeah. and all she does is a few shorts just saying look at my titan isn't it great you know, and there'll be yeah. a slew of horrible comments and shit like that. Yeah. Uh, but she knows, and I, I bet she, you know, she's got a good job, but I bet she knows if she actually put her heart and soul into it and actually tried to become a YouTuber, the audience would be there to back her up and to actually, yeah. you know, to pull her in. And, and, and so there, there, the space is there. Don't get disheartened. If you're someone who is who is a woman or, or, or whatever, you know, don't get disheartened by, by the, the shit that you get because you will get the shit. You will, because I get the shit. And I'm a normal looking bloke, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and no one wants to fuck me. Well, not, not many people want to fuck me, right? And I don't, I don't produce this like, this like raging male reaction, whereas that you're going to get it. But the audience is there. We're here to look at you, look at your, what you're doing and say hello. Brilliant. Fantastic. Be here. Yeah. Um, I think, I think you're, 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 you know, you're making some good points. And I think, um, this, as it, as it becomes mainstream, it's, it will inevitably, we, yeah, you know, and, it, and <clears throat> there will, the community will broaden. Is the, is the way uh, I look at it. And uh, Overlord Cavill and I, will see to that. Yeah, don't you worry about that. Yeah, well, well, the moment that comes out, it's just like, boom. I'm that. I, I think that is when that happens. I think Games Workshop, Warhammer Forty K, it, it will finally breach into full mainstream. I, ironically, full mainstream. Um, the thought I had in my head of his series was of a Mordian, right? But uh, he, but he's a. He's Mordian. got the chin for it. Yeah, that's what I mean. He's in the full. He's in the full regalia, short yeah. hair. You know, this, this hench-looking motherfucker in the full, full uniform, and just watch all the all the women just explode. Their ovaries explode everywhere. It's gonna be brilliant. That's what I would do. I'd be like, yeah, but let's go and get the normies. Let's go and get the normies with Henry Cavill. Go get him in. And while she's here, there'll be, be there'll be a little, in. there'll be a little advertisement at the back going, oh, if you want your own Mordians. There we are. Ah, you know, okay. well, you think GW would be good at that, but they blew up the old world and then sold Warhammer Total War. So yeah, oh my god. Yeah, well, I, I think I don't think I do not think to this day that they realised what they were doing when they sold the rights to Creative Assembly. I uh, honestly don't know. They did not. I know think they were selling. I th I think I think you're 100. percent I think they were just, they were purging themselves of yeah. all. They were like anything old world, gotta go, get it out the fucking doors. We're yep. not doing this anymore. Yep. And the Create Assembly, the, the Create Assembly comes out and says, "Oh, can we buy this IP off you?" Yeah, fuck it, and we don't want any more fucking have yeah, it. Yeah. Like, do what you want with it. It's fine. Uh, we might make a tabletop game out of it at some point, but we don't really give a shit. And then literally, War Habitat War comes out, and you was like, "Fuck." Yeah. It's like <laughs> how much? God the, damn the, it. Um, the amount of people that I, li I don't think, I don't go in GW all that much. Hmm. But I don't think a year goes by where I'm not in a games workshop or in a hobby shop and someone comes in and goes, Oh, is this the place where you sell Warhammer? I've played Total War. Can I buy? I love the Empire. Do you have any Empire models? And the GW guy is like, Well, we have Stormcast Eternal. <laughs> yeah. And the guy's like, yeah. yeah. Don't give a shit. And they yeah. walk out. Like the number of they, they must have missed out on hundreds of thousands. Well, the thing is, of the thing is, Angel Sigma is outselling the old world but but it's being pushed as well and supported mm. and new stuff's coming out for it 
Um, I honestly think if you saw Games Workshop put this kind of weight behind the old world when it was out, it would never have gone away. It would have been yeah. easily a clear second place to Warhammer 40,000. Yeah. Nothing's going to take the place of Warhammer 40,000. Um, it just it's a zeitgeist thing now. It's it's in the, yeah. it's in the collective consciousness of of, of uh, as you said before. If it's on South Park, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, you, you've made it. You're, you're there. Yeah. Um, Games Workshop are never going to go away, and and this is this is the the, the thing. As I know, discourse miniatures talks about it as well, where she says, um, mm. you know, Games Workshop isn't the hobby. And I'm like, yeah, that's true, and I, and I support you for championing other other games. Yeah, but that's also not true, because that's like saying Disney isn't all animation. Well, I I wish it's, it wasn't so, but it kind of is. So it, it, at the it very kind of least, is. it's ninety nine point nine percent. Exactly, yeah. yeah. At the very least, it kind of, and they're the biggest one, by the way, with Wizards of the Coast also in the room as well, and they're still yeah. the biggest. You know, yeah. Wizards of the Coast tried once to take Games Workshop on on a retail front, and Games Workshop, when I was there, they would still bring it up. They would still laugh and bring it up, saying these guys tried and they failed to yeah. do their own stores, uh, because yeah. they, they we offered them advice, they didn't take it, and look where they are now. They now have no stores and they're they're just an online only company. Go fuck them. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah. And, and if anyone tells you from Games Workshop that they don't see anyone else's competition, lies, yeah. lies. They despise. They despise Wizards of the Coast, and they and they do really you? don't like Blizzard. They really don't like Blizzard. Like Blizzard. Ah, interesting. Yeah, yeah because of uh, well, um, Warcraft is Warhammer. They couldn't get the Warhammer. And license. yeah, so, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And then I, I do, I do like the the flex that Warlord Games did. And I don't. Warlord Games is tiny in comparison. To, yeah, yeah. To, 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 uh, to GW, but Warlord Games recently moved their HQ to opposite Games Workshop HQ. <laughs> Isn't that um, a, is that Rick Rick, Rick uh, Priestley? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They literally moved their <laughs> HQ to put the big sign outside it to be like opposite GW. That's brilliant. Like every single day, GW people have to look at that fucking sign That's when brilliant. they go in. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> and it's like you're gonna move anywhere in Nottingham, Rick. Where are you going? I think uh, I think I'm going home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think um like when I, when I, whenever I was there outside, uh, whenever I'd make a, a journey to Warhammer World, you would realize how lucky you are the first few times you're there because you get you get everything for free essentially. You get to go see all the exhibits for free. I know yeah. you get to you know do, do intro games or you get to go on Twitch and stuff. And and I do appear on Twitch by the way. I appear on Warhammer TV on when I was doing my walk around. Oh really? This is, yeah, this, this is like way back in the day. So so I I appear there. They're doing like a thing in the corner. This is just when it was starting up, and you can see like my body and my chin as I'm shaking people's hands. They're like, oh, oh yes, man. this is North. I'm like, hello, hello, hello. Uh, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll fuck off, shall I? All right, bye, bye. All right, let's go. <laughs> and uh, that's like the that's my my claim to fame. Um, but yeah, like it's a it's a not uh, one other thing I wanted to touch on, and I don't think um, I'm not sure whether you have anyone else on, but if you do get any other ex Games Workshop people on. Ask okay. them what they think about the, the company since they've left and if they're allowed to say anything because the amount of people who have left yeah. and are so like, yeah, I'm not saying anything bad about these people because I want to keep yeah. staying my good graces just in case. And that's fine. It's, it's a business decision. But I think things would only change a little bit more if people say, that's not right. And I didn't like being treated like that. And I didn't like that happening either. Um, I know yeah. Duncan Rhodes probably has some stories. You know, you know that guy. Oh yeah. You yeah. know that guy's got some stories. He's got some things up his sleeve, and he he was a, a cool guy. Don't get me wrong, and, and he and he would he would let him get away with a lot. Like I seem to remember him smashing the shit out of an odd case when I was there with the sledgehammer, which was quite funny. But like, nice. yeah, it, it's it's there will be other people out there who have things to say. It's just that I was a small rung on the ladder, and they don't give a shit about me, so they're not going to sue me. So I didn't give a shit. I yeah. just started talking. Um, I suppose it's also one of those where a lot of people. Um, when they leave a business they're like they don't want to burn any bridges because there's the chance that if they leave they might have to go back cap in hand yeah you know, and whilst it's very easy to be like oh why would you why would you ever go back to where you left well real world exactly. responsibilities sometimes push you and if you left on good terms mm. and they were and they and the company was sad to see you go then you can even if you end up having to kind of eat humble pie you can go back um i personally haven't ever done that and i've always felt like once you've ended your chapter with a company or with a business it's kind of like that's that's it um but i do 
yeah, I feel like if I worked for Gamefoot, I would be similar in, in my post relationship, uh, my, my sort of post working relationship with them, like you, where I just be like, well, I'm, I don't, I don't like taking step backwards, so yeah, I'd be like, yeah, I'd be like, suck my dick, GW. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think somebody said to me like, what, what would? I ain't worth shit. Sue, sue me. I dare you. Yeah. I double dare you, motherfucker. You can, you can have my seven pound fifty. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> So like, no, I think um, somebody said to me, what would need to change for you to go back? And I was like, would you ever go back? And I, was, I said, what they would need to change is so fundamental that there's just yeah. no point in even asking that question. Because like, yeah, you know, it would need to be such a a, a, a shift in, in attitude. And maybe it's happened since I've left, I don't know. But yeah. um, it, it was it was an interesting time in my life, I will say that. Like we had, yeah. we had lots of interesting customers come in. We had like this, this Titan. I don't know if you've ever seen, I've ever heard that Dave the Titan guy when he came in. He had this like, um, no. so I'm standing in the store and I'm giving an intro game to this kid. So it's half term, you know, so I'm, I'm doing good business. Like, oh, yeah, this is yeah. all going really well. And um, we've got these four by four tables and, you know, I've just given an intro game one of them. It's four by four table. It's not very good, but yeah, it's, it's good enough for a 500 point battle. It's fine. So um, the kids go away and, and I'm standing around and this van turns up outside. I'm like, I don't get my window clean, my window's clean today, what's going on? So this guy gets out, and you can tell he's a nerd, he's like six foot three, fat, and I mean like, you know, oh, fat, um, it's raining men, fat, right? So he comes out, and he, he's, he goes, he walks around, and he's got this flip-flops on, I'm thinking, what the fuck, but he's got, he's got flip-flops on, right? And they've got, do you know the um, the cushion on a trainer by your by your foot? Right, when it meets your leg, it's got them on them for some reason. I don't know whether he had something going on with his with his heel. That sounds matter. strange. But he, he goes to the back of his. Maybe he had it for medical reasons. Yeah, he's probably. But he goes to the back of his van. He gets up this this trawler. And it's like one of these um, stand up trawlers, like like trolleys, where you can put like files on it and stuff, you know. So he leaves it back out of his van. I'm thinking. Oh, this must be a delivery, um, but it's not Thursday because we get our stock delivered every Thursday. I'm like, okay, well, it's like a Tuesday or whatever. So he comes in, uh, stands there with this massive box, reaches down, like sorts his sort out his trainers and stands up and goes, "I am here for a battle." I'm like, okay, right, cool. Um, yeah, what have you brought? I have brought my army. I was like, okay, cool, excellent. Is that it? And he's like, yes. I was like, fucking hell. Do you want me to put two two of these things together? I mean, we've only got like two four by four tables. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. So GW, you know, it's GW, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, like, I could try, but you know, I can't promise it. Yeah, yes, I will. I will play on that one. Okay, fine. So he wheels this thing, and you can hear the whole store's gone quiet, and you can just hear the squeaking of the wheel as he rolls it over to the to the table. Oh. And uh, I said, well, who wants a game? And one of the kids on half term, who just got into Tau in a big way, he's like, it's Tau, yes. He's like, yes, I'll play him because Tower quite oh. strong at eighth edition. So he's like, yes, I'll play him. Cool. Get his, get his, oh, no. get his one thousand point gun line out. Sticks his gun line down, and everybody, it's out. And he says, uh, "Well, do you want to roll off to deploy?" And he goes, "No, I'll let you deploy first. And he's like, "Oh, okay." So the kid. Is that how it works? Okay. Yeah, I mean, the kid deploys first, and out of this guy's box, a Titan appears, oh. like an actual Imperial Titan appears. Oh. Now. This is this not, not going to end well. And this is also not a forge world bought Imperial Titan. I know because of the fucking seams, right? I, I'm like, this is not, this is not bought. Ah, wars, did you, right? classic UW, did you get your, did you get your weighing scales out? Yeah, no, I, I, I wasn't having it. I wasn't having it. Don't turn up to my store and try <laughs> and play with a Titan on a four by four fucking table and not expect me to call, child. To call, yeah, against a child. <laughs> and not expect me to call you. So I go over and he puts this thing on the table and I'm like, he's not going to put that on the table, is he? And in disbelief, I'm thinking, he's not going to do that, and he does it. And I'm like, okay, so I go over and I say, look, man, and what's your name? Oh, Dave, Dave. Oh, Dave, uh, nice to meet you, Dave. You know, I'm North. Why is it always Dave? <clears throat> I know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's always Dave. Um, I said, yeah, mate, uh, you, 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 can't, you can't play with that. Why not? It's, it's, a, it's a legal model. It's Well, number one, like, it's not. Number one, it's not a Games Workshop model. Yes, it is. No, no it's not. Would you have a proof of purchase? No, I don't bring it where, wherever I go. Fair enough, you got me on that one. But I can tell you it's not a, an actual, you know, an actual thing. So I can see all the fucking 3D printed lines on it. So this is not yeah. a Games Workshop product. I know what it yeah. looks like. You know, I've had them in here before to show things off, but they never get played in here. Why? Because we're on a four by four table. You absolute smooth brain, right? And I'm not letting <laughs> you play against this kid. It's just not happening. 
And anyway, he stomps off. He, so he has to go through the indignity of <laughs> taking this child-sized model and putting it back in his box. Yeah. And he wheels it back out. And of course, silence. You can hear the squeaking of the wheel as it goes back out again, back to his van. Uh. Um, I've got three days off after this. So I'm like, okay, we're having a really good day. And my name appears on a Warhammer group on Facebook. Oh, and when I say Warhammer group, I mean the big one, the biggest one, oh. right? Saying well, like Warhammer 40k Facebook. Or whatever yeah. It is. So it's this yeah. guy saying, "This man wouldn't let me play with my Titan in his store." And, rah, 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 rah. and he's he's giving it all up. And of course, all the other neckbeards saying, "Well, shame this guy." And I was like, "No, no, I'll do it myself." So I went in there and said, "Listen, yes, hello, Games Workshop manager here. This is what happened, right?" You walked in with an Imperial Titan. You tried to put it on a 4x4 table to play an 11-year-old boy. That's not happening yeah. in my store. Go suck a dick, essentially, right? Yeah. Um, to which I got a phone call from head office <laughs> saying, oh. saying uh, you can't you can't get involved with spats online. You're bringing the company into disrepute. And I was like, all right, fair enough. Oh. I'll stop. Um, and my man, my trainer was like, yeah, just, do, just ignore it, dude. These people just go away on their own eventually. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that that was so we got we got people like that all the time. Yeah. I mean, there are worse ones than that, uh, but like we there are just yeah we got it all the time from uh, from the hobby. So next time you see a games workshop manager who's not quite in a good mood, he's probably dealt with some shit like that earlier. Probably on. dealt with someone like yeah, that. he's probably yeah, dealt yeah. with like a with a Dave or you know somebody else who'd come in. But you know there are. I've got more positive stories than negative from my time working at uh, Games Worker from customers, but the bad yeah. ones are bad, like really. Yeah. Bad. Like we, we've had, I've had somebody shit themselves. I've had, I've had people throwing up. I've <laughs> had, I've had kids like oh, pushing. Pu oh, yeah, but I've had one kid pushing another kid through one of the dis one of the display cases. Yeah, we've had all sorts of shit go on. And do you find? Uh... Do you find that parents drop the kids off? Uh, you yeah. store and then go and do the shopping. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, happens all the time. We are basically Games Workup Daycare. And there, we had this, so I probably shouldn't say this one, but fuck it, it's your channel. And it, I, can, I can always edit it out, don't worry. I know, just leave it. I, I, you I, can sure. put it on your channel as much as you want. I can always edit it on my channel. So, um, you guys like Northern X are like, yeah, there's this one kid who was an absolute balance who I punched him in the face. No, 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 like, no. Right, no. yeah, edited that bit out. No, it, it's, it's not like that. It's not like that. So, so we had a we had a WhatsApp group of the lads in the local area. Uh, who, who the only one who wasn't there was my old manager because we didn't want him in the in the group. That's just one of them things. Um, cause, cause right, you, don't, anything... you, don't, you don't always invite. It's not like a TV. You don't invite your boss around to your barber. Well, it, 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 also, it, it was now a peer, which is really funny. And in fact, the day that I got offered the job, I actually went upstairs in his store to get the phone call. And they said, congratulations, yeah. you know, you're, you're Games Workshop Manager. And I just walked downstairs oh. and just smiled at him. It's like, hey, oh. we're peers now. We're colleagues. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> fucking shut up and go and paint the shelves. <laughs> All right, sorry. Um, so, like, yeah, so um, we had this WhatsApp group where it was known it was known as Games Workshop Crash because we hated it. We hated the you know, mums. But yeah. if the mum was hot enough, we put up with it because it means we got to see her more than once a day. That's terrible. But we still said it, and we were like, "Yeah, you bollocks to it." Devious bastard. Yeah, yep. <laughs> we were just like, "Yeah, I, 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 was she hot? Yeah, all right, well, well, she can get away with it, then, I suppose." But there was like a few of them where we were just like, <laughs> "Every time she comes in, like, here's a free starter up." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> here's a few kid. There you go. I mean, we had uh, oh. with um, uh, but there, there was one uh, who who would come in, and she was she was hot, but it was like, she was just she was a bit chavy. Um, but she was Should just... we explain that for our uh, transatlantic cousins? Oh, uh, Chavi Ch is Ch um, Ch kind of common. I'd say common would be a good way of putting it, I guess. I don't know. Common? Are you implying there's a class system in the UK? So how dare you? I know, I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, they, they she'd come in. Comes she... in, we're, we're in tracksuits, fags are going have one ear. Yeah, we're in, we're in tracksuits, drinking big, all the time. Big hoop earrings, you know, cuffs a hit kid around the head. That but it was a weird one because you could see, you could see that's a beautiful woman, but like underneath the makeup and all of the shit that's going on. But anyway, she, she would come in and she would like, you know, drop the kid off and literally leave him there all day. And this kid was just a, a horror. He was just terrible. And it got to the stage where I was like, listen, um, I don't mind him being here, but he can't pick stuff off the display case. He can't do this. He can't do that. And she said, well, that's what you do, isn't it? And I was like, no, no, <laughs> no. I, I sell these things, models. See on the back of it, it says here, yeah, it says it's not a toy, right? Like they can't be picked up and thrown around. 
And she said, well, well, it's for children, though. And I just turn around, and we got the Veterans Night going on, so we got, like, an entire Royal Navy crew just standing around. Ah. <laughs> I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, you're here by our, you know, acquiescence. You're not here because, you you know, you should be here. You know, if you're, if you're below 16 and you're in the hobby, you're here because the older lads are saying you're cool and you can be here. That's, that's the hobby is for, you know, if you ask any Games Workshop employee, they will tell you the hobby's for adults, not for kids. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's what it is. Any black, even any of the Black Library novels. Well, exactly, yeah. Even, you know, ones relatively, relatively tame as Gaunt's Ghosts, which Gaunt, are seen as um, like basically military, military novels in space, aren't they? The opening book has got a scene with all drums made out of skin and shit. Well, if it? somebody so... says to me, <laughs> the, the, that argument goes out the window when I say, oh yeah, um, do you mean like that, that blood orgy scene from Fulgrim, that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally yeah. kid friendly, yeah, cool. Totally awesome. for kids, man. You know, yeah. like, yeah, so, yeah, we would get that all the time. It would happen all the time. We would get, like, parents dropping them off and we'd have, we'd have people with, uh, you know, dad, dads were the worst, ironically. Mums weren't that bad. Really? It was the dads. Yeah, the dads were terrible. Dads it were like, because oh, you're a lecturer. Cool. It is, it, it, you know. It's not just because you're not a lecturous bastard, is it? And you were like, ah, oh, dad's not interested in you. No, you know, no, well, I'm a lecturous <laughs> bastard. But, like, no, it wasn't because wasn't of that. Like, it was more like, you know, the mum's working, right? Whereas the dad's like, I'm going for a pint. You go ah. and look at those models for a bit, and hopefully you don't get molested. Bye. And then they would yeah. be gone. And, and luckily, because I run a good King's Workshop, and most King's Workshops are good. In fact, looking yeah. after kids, ironically, we're not we don't do favors to ourselves because we're so good at it like yeah. we're so good at keeping them safe and making sure that everybody in the store's doing okay in terms yeah. of safety not in, in annoyance that's a whole other thing but like in being safe and being secure yeah i i, I would put my kid in a games workshop like that you know what i mean if I, if I had to in a pinch if i had to be yeah. like listen um i've got to go take my mother to the hospital because she's got a heart attack can you yeah. just hold on to him for half an hour that would be the store i go into to do it don't get me wrong but it doesn't mean you should do it all the time, you know, because yeah. that's not what, what... I say we, it's not what they do, right? And it was yeah. annoying. But push um, comes to show, difficult situation, or just you need somewhere to just dump them for half an hour, it's, you know, because it's... Yeah. Out of, any, out of any store on the high street, that's the one you would pick. Exactly, that's quite yeah. That's a big compliment. Yeah, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some weirdos in there, and I, I encountered one or two of them when I was uh, around. We got one of them actually taken away by the police when I was there, which was not very... Which is a bit of a... <gasps> moment yeah, yeah yeah he wasn't doing anything much it was more like you know he, he just touched somebody inappropriately in the past and right, that kid yeah. then turned up to the store and was like and this is what, what i will say about my ex-manager he handled that like a fucking boss like he literally yeah. went right okay um get this guy in the back room and keep him there while i call the police he can't leave he's not leaving the store yeah and that was yeah. it. We called the police, and that, and that and that got sorted out. And and that, that's how seriously they take it. They they literally, you know, they know what their what their reputation is like. But they also yeah. know that Games Workshop are a hobby that has that kind of a smell around it. Like this is we where those guys hang out, right? Well, anywhere so, with children, right? It, well, well, yeah. But this is where with all a bunch of nerds, people already think we're weird. We don't want to give them any more reason to think. You know ah, what I mean? Right, yeah. So, like, the Games Workshop are totally on top of keeping people like that safe. And, and they, they've moved that to the LGBTQ people now as well, which is great. And they're, they're, now they've got, like, a, a good space to go into and have fun and, yeah. and, and get involved in the hobby. Um, it's just unfortunate that we do tend to attract. And people know from my, uh, from my arguments and my own um, channel, I'm not some bleeding heart person. Like, if you're a dickhead, I'll tell you. But... Yeah. Um, it, the, the, the hobby is an inclusive place and it is a place where everyone should feel like they can come in and have a, have a go and throw some yeah. dice um, so even though we have had arguments today where we've said look you know the game probably should be this way if you're the other way fucking have at it dude you're not, you're not doing me any you know I'm, I'm not rending my garments because of how you play the game no problem go for it Yeah. Um, that's how it should be anyway and I hope that's how it goes going forward to be honest with you the hobby yeah yeah absolutely 100% um okay well we've covered quite a lot to be honest yeah we've talked about quite a lot it's been quite good i don't know if there's anything i've i've been asking you a lot of questions there's anything you want to chuck back my way i know you were a little pressed for time when we started so i thought i'd uh i just check in with you now before we yeah i mean I, i've already sent a text saying i'm a bit late but i'm enjoying it so I'm, i wanted to just okay get, you know, have a little have a little chat um mainly mainly to do with the the background of of 
being a Warhammer YouTuber because because you've done this mm. for a, a longer than I have. At least I think you have anyway. I'm look at it. I think yeah, um, you definitely I, have. I did. I started YouTube, uh, but not Warhammer YouTube. I started YouTube about 10, 11 years ago. Oh, okay. it was Wait, well, it was playing video. It was playing video games and stuff. Um, and I started. Uh, I just did it just during uni, just to you were part of a student. I got a lot of free time. Yeah. Um, and I, then I started doing Warhammer YouTube. Um, uh, end of seventh edition. Mm -hmm. So what about five? Oh, probably longer, six, seven years now. Yeah, yeah, but I've only done it full time the last twelve months. So would you have like, so your content is very, um, I I would say, and and anyone who watches my stuff because this will be up today on on my channel, um, anyone watches my stuff if you don't like the way that I do rules because, um, how do I put this, I'm fucking shit, um, huh. if you don't like the way that I do it, go and watch Mordian because like it really is literally, um, the hobby nightmare stuff is there but in, in a lot less quantity. And the rule stuff takes the place of all my hobby nightmare stuff. Essentially, it's really, really good. Really, really good stuff. I just like guard. <laughs> you, uh, also guard. Also guard. There is a lot of guard. I, on don't, there. I don't know shit about any of the faction. Yeah. But I like. I like. I like the Imperial Guard. Well, that, but I mean, I, I mean, you've got like battle reports and things that that show a lot of sure. um, a lot of other. Yeah, I know Black Legion, Black Templars, and. There's all yeah. sorts. I've seen orcs on there. I've seen Tyranids on there. I've seen you know. So the, yeah. there are a lot of. Even saw Steel Legion on there the other day. Oh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, so, like, so I have my Mordians are my main uh, guard army, but mm. um, I had a when, when you know I start when I with Eighth Edition I started Steel Legion army. And so now I've, I've you know what's better than collecting the most expensive army once? Collecting yeah, collecting the most expensive army twice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I I will say like my army is very very cheap. It's like how many yeah. Grey Knights do I have? Twenty. Brilliant. Give me three sets, please. Do you need any more? Nope. Bye. Let's meet up. I need three sets of Grey Knights, one can of Iron Breaker, Norn Oil, and a brush. Yes. My and a dry brush. Done. Thank you. And yeah. I'm done. Um, but no, like, like, if you like what I do, and you, and, but you like a bit more hobby content, as in gaming content, go and watch him. It's really cool stuff. But that, that, that's no, literally... You know, all, all of my questions are for off air, basically, more, more like back end stuff of like, you know, how do you do this and how do you do that? That would make for a very good video. So you can, ask, you can ask whatever you want, man. I don't really mind. I've, I have absolutely, you know, this, this has been very much uh, um, me asking you a lot of questions. So, and this, but remember, this is going up on your channel as well. So, yeah. if you want to ask anything back this way that you might, yeah, your, your viewers might find interesting, that's absolutely fine. I don't mind if you want it to be off air on air. It doesn't bother me at all. You can ask me now, you can always so, edit it out later. What, what I, what I would say is, is that I've got a lot of guard people who are on. I don't know why people get so into them from the from the get go. Maybe because they're guard. The, yeah, maybe because they're, they're the normal. They're the first. fucking best, bro. That's I know, why. I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but we're, we're taking off the Mordian hat for a minute. Like, it's glued on. No, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think I think because I get a lot of people coming in saying, "Look, I want to get into to pure guard." But I have no fucking clue where to start. Mainly because right. we got like the Cadians through now and things like that, like the new Cadians. But they're just it, unlike the Space Marines. The Space Marines is literally, do you like Space Marines? Yes. Here's some fucking Space Marines, right? Whereas the everything that I get yeah. from from my own channel is, I really like Imperial Guard, but I have no idea where to start. Where did you start? Because you didn't start with Mordians, right? You started with Steel Legion, no. you say. Right, so how how so, did you figure out what kind of a regiment you actually wanted to do? So I started out uh, my when I first started with forty k. Don't worry, I won't take hours and hours and hours. I started oh, with forty k um, with second edition box set. The orcs had like an axe in the hand, and they were all monopose, and the Gretsch were all mm. monopose. Um, and I was like five years old, so I just played against my uh, my older brother. I had no idea what was happening, uh, but it was, it was just pushing miles around having fun. I got into the guard initially um with uh, actually when i went to secondary school um and i bought a it was one of the old cadian battle forces plus a little bit extra off a friend for like 40 pounds now by nowadays standards that's the equivalent of buying three of those fucking star collect not star collectings combat patrols so even it was a good deal back then mm. but it was uh it's a it's a fantastic deal by today's standards um, and I just played Asgard and I didn't have a specific regiment in mind uh, for a while, just from the ages of like 11 through to sort of 15, 16, I just played with my guard guys. 
Um, I think I was particularly uh, creative because I called them the, the Arcadians, like Arcadia rather than Cadians, because, you know, that was the extent of my imagination growing up. Um, and <laughs> then when I got into the Mordians, I actually got into the Mordians first. I, I saw some Steel Legion, I had the Steel Legion models. There was second, there was a second hand, uh, there was a funny local games that used to sell second hand models. And I saw some, he had like loads of Steel Legion and I just, for a good price, and I bought those, but that, that, that didn't get into being a Steel Legion player. I just saw Guard for a good deal. Mordians were actually the first regiment that stuck with me. And the reason I got into them was because I was just, I wanted to start playing like, more narratively, I was I was evolving as a player, and rather than just chucking down my random smorgasbord of models, I wanted to actually start not like necessarily like role playing, but more like just getting a little bit more into the faction, you know, mm. and put 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 a bit making them more my dudes rather than just toys. Mm. And so what I did is I I, I was I was getting into the idea of um, running like a. a pure infantry army just way you know classic guard waves after waves of dudes i realized the necrons had a preset kill limit so i said waves of my own guards nothing until they shut down <laughs> um and i just saw these like i was like what's the regiment that does that and it was like oh it's these guys called the mordians and i just saw the old metal mordian iron guard models and it's a bit like how you said when you saw those gray knights and you just couldn't draw take your eye away from mm. them and I kept seeing these Metal Mordians, and I was like, these guys look pretty cool. And there was a, a guy at the gaming store I was part of at the time. Um, and he said, I've got loads of these old Mordians. I will uh, sell them to you for next to nothing, just because um, I know how much you love your guard. And I know oh, how that, much that, you That's a killer. You're in the hobby for life, man, when that happens. Yeah, yeah oh exactly. And it, this is why it's so important having like veterans in the hobby yeah. this is why like i i have regularly just when someone has been getting into the hobby for the first time i have just given them models if yeah. i'm not using it if it's been sat in my pile of shame for two or three years or maybe you know one to three years i'm never going to use that thing maybe i pick up as an ebay job lot i will just get like a bunch of marines and just give them to someone i'll get that land speed of storm that i'm never going to fucking use i'll just give it to someone because it doesn't mean shit to me mm -hmm. But because that because of because this guy was called um he was called john because john gave me basically gave me his mortgage he gave me by nowadays standards what would be about 500 pounds worth of mortgage he sold wow. them to me for 50 for 50 quid i'm talking all the, the metal weapon teams all the majority of the metal models that you see on my channel were this guy he just sold them to me 50 quid less it was like 30 40p a model jesus which is if you go on ebay now it's did he used to work for them because you used to be able to get a nope. the, the discount was in weight which was ridiculous Nope, than, he didn't uh... use the work for him. He was just he just played the hobby since Rogue Trader. Wow. And he had this huge army, I say huge army, by like about a thousand points worth of Mordians, which he had not used in years. Mm. And he knew they were worth a lot. He said, I know these are worth a lot, but I'm a full I, you know, I'm a grown adult with a fucking job, so I don't really need to sell these to, yeah, to, yeah. A, to, a, to a kid that's up and coming, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'll just basically you give me enough money to sort out my Friday night, bin, you know, my Friday night down the pub. And uh, and you can just have them, and I'll just enjoy. I will just enjoy seeing a young blood playing the hobby with models that I never got to around to using. So, and that's and I and for me, fifty quid at the time was a lot of money because I was, um, you know, I was a high school student, and uh, so I remember saying to my brother, like, "Oh, should I do this?" And he went, "Bro, like, I will give you the money for them, and you can pay me about like five quid a week, you know, your pocket money, basically." Yeah. To uh, or yeah, you know, from like you know, from your part time job, if you uh, if you just wanna. If you just want to, if you just want to get them, and I was like, yeah, fucking sweet, I'll, I will, I will take that deal, and that's that's, that's what that's what happened, and then I, I've never looked back. I just, I just love the Mordians, love the guard, and that was it. That was when the love affair began, and and it's been going strong for about. Um, that was when I was eighteen, so it's been going for about twelve years now. That's brilliant. So, so that's um, so that, that's that question answered from from my from my own. I guess it wasn't a question about how other people can get into them. That was more of a question <clears> how I got. Into them, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Politicians uh, answer for you there. Yeah. So like. <laughs> The other thing, because you mentioned Warlord before, um, mm. I've had a lot of stories come to, yeah. come to you know where this is going, uh, come to me from Warlord games when they played World War Two games. Um, oh yeah. How prevalent are, shall we say, Third Reich enthusiasts in that game? Oh, oh my god. Um, absolutely zero. Oh really? In my personal experience. Okay. So obviously. 
uh, Bolt Action is my secondary game. And obviously, everyone, mm-hmm. I'm not, I, I don't like the saying your truth because I think some people can use it. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. I think, I think some people, are, I think it actually is a very valid point of view, but it's a little bit like, it's one of those sayings that's been overused a little bit now, unfortunately, and has lost a lot of its weight. Live your truth. But, uh, like yeah, that. exactly. I think I think to some people it's it is very important. Everyone's lived experience is important, but I think some people it's now almost been used so much people have turned it around. But that's a mm. topic for another day, shall we say? Um, and I, so I would say in my personal experience, I have never come across anyone that was. I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say the word YouTube YouTube be damned. I've never come across anyone that was a Nazi, okay, or even close to being a Nazi, or mm. even you know even remote not even on the same fucking universe as being a nazi it's mm-hmm. so far removed mm-hmm. so i've i've literally i have personally i've never seen it i've never heard i've never heard any stories of it uh, but it is my secondary game and i play with a re- i play with the most people i know that play it are between close acquaintances and distance acquaintances are about 30 people so mm-hmm. you know that's that might be a sample size that's good enough for a shampoo advert say the product's safe but it's not good enough for I suppose, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's still a, <laughs> it's, it's a game I'm thinking of getting into, you see. That's why I was like, oh, well, I get all these stories. And I'm like, well, if it's like that, it's I don't bollocks, want to play man. a game like that. So, so it, it, no, it's, it's yeah, that's good. Total bollocks, man. Bolt that's Action good. is uh, a fantastic game. It is not, um, it is not overly historical. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, the Americans, uh, the Americans can move and shoot without penalty because in all the Hollywood films, Americans shoot with <laughs> the hip and hit every time. <laughs> You know, like it's like if in bot action, like there's like there's like a, they give like a historic explanation, and then like when you talk when you speak, you talk to like some of the the sales reps and the people, and you know some of the interviews that they've done, they're like, well, the Americans always hit when they fire from the hip, don't they? So they can move and shoot with no penalties, whereas everyone else, if they move, they they don't shoot as good. That's cool. so it's a it's a really really good game. Like the the Russians, um, you know, we've all seen Enemy at the Gates, you know, yes. ah, hurrah, you know, the man with the rifle dies. That actually didn't happen all that often i'm sure you'll be able to point to some examples yeah mm-hmm. there will be as with any case in history you can find one example that validates your point but um that on a large scale didn't happen but that doesn't stop the russian faction from getting a free massive blob of conscripts and being able to take squads of men which are half the price of everyone else's squads because only one in every two guys gets a rifle <laughs> <laughs> i love it no, so it, so it, is, it is good to know, like, because it, it, it is one of those things that we're thinking about getting into. But I suppose, yeah. like, we're, we're, we're doing a, a series called Hobby Nightmares, and I've come across this quite yeah. a bit. I am getting exposed to the, shall we say, the distillation of negative. Yeah, naturally. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. You know, people are going to come in and go, oh, this happened to me. And um, it just so happens, like, that most of the ones I get from Bolt Action are people going, yeah, I came across this kind of guy who wrote things about Jews in the front of his tanks, and it wasn't very fun. So, uh, oh, shit. Okay. I'm well, very like... sorry you went through that. If I, I can tell you now, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what, I mean, I, I play a little bit of everything. So I played a little bit, um, I main, I main um, 40k, but I play a bit of action, I play a bit of Battletech, I played a bit of Lord of the Rings, I've played, um, I've done a bit of d and I've done, what the fucking games have I gone to recently? A, a bit of, all sorts of little bits and bobs. A bit of Blood Red Skies recently, all sorts of, you know, historical, mm-hmm. sci-fi, the, the whole nine yards. Um, and in any game group I've ever been part of, if anyone like that, if you know, if someone took their Aeronautica Imperialis models and started painting that kind of stuff on them, if someone took their Lord of the Rings models and started giving the orcs banners with a, with a certain angry windmill symbol on mm-hmm. it, you know, it doesn't matter what game group you're in. I, I, my experience is you go in there and you, you start doing that shit, and people turn around and go, get the fuck out. Yeah, just just don't play them. Just just walk away. So, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. picking up my models, not painting them. Because that that was my that was my advice in that story, and that one I got as well was like, yeah. Don't don't tolerate that. Don't start playing a game with that person. You, you're then no. you're then acquiescing to that behaviour. Like you're literally you might, saying yeah. this is okay and you're allowed to be here. You're not allowed to be here. Go fuck off. Um, I, I have run I have run bot action events, just little small ones. I've run about uh, five or six between ten and thirty people events, and I've never had anyone like that turn up. Whether they're friends that are buying tickets to help me out, or mm-hmm. or people that are that are randoms. You know what? The, you know the most common person that turns up X service. Hmm. You know, I had a guy, uh, there's, a, there's a regular guy that comes to all of my events who uh, is an ex-para, uh, he's, he's, get, he's, he's an elderly gentleman, and he has a perfectly, you know, he has, he has a, a, from using sort of a, a 40k term, a very law-accurate para army. Mm. 
and he just plays paras and that's all he gets gives a shit about because he was in the paras yeah and that's the kind of person that turns up if anyone like that turned up at my event and was like you know, who, you know anyone uh, the opposite that should say like so the angry windman enthusiast turned up i would be like just get out, just get out i don't give a shit be better and no i'm not giving you a refund just fuck off yeah 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 i like i like quite like the angry windmill enthusiast that's, <laughs> that's really funny I'm stealing that one for future reference. I, that, that, those are my it. questions. Oh, this somewhere from the internet. Yeah, those are my. That, that's what I had. Like, literally, those two things I really wanted to bury into and get and get into. But, fair uh, play, fair play. I would highly encourage you to get into by action, man. Um, oh I mean, yeah. You're already someone that's outside of the GW bubble. But when you, anyone who's listening to this right now, if you think paying thirty pounds for ten uh, infantry is reasonable, you are being blinded by the lies of the Jedi. Oh yeah, I, I, I've seen, yeah. I've seen uh, even on composite games. I'm like, uh, I was like, oh yeah, I'm thinking about getting into Hail Caesar because I'm, I'm an ancient historian. Uh, that'd be really cool. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're like, yeah, you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck with them than you are. <laughs> you get like an entire army, like 75 quid done. There you go, fine. Oh, you know, it's it's, be... it's it's insane. You go like, I, I say this to a lot of people with like our action. It's not like 40k where you might be 400 pounds deep before you find out. I really actually just don't like this game. I've tried mm. playing it. And it's just, I'm just not getting it. Everyone's telling me it's great. Uh, you you buy a bot action army. You can buy a starter army if it's for, for someone like the, the I think it's the US Airborne or the British Powers for 50 pounds. You can yeah. have about the scavenge around the internet to find a decent you know, quid, 20% yeah. discount or something. But it's 50 quid. It's less. It's almost half the price of a combat patrol from GW, and that 50 quid army. Is the equivalent of getting two thousand points in games in workshop. Well, even it's even that, like, like, so I just did it on there. I just went, I went and looked at Hail Caesar. So the starter set for Hail yeah. Caesar on on Compass Games is fifty quid, right? Yeah. Well, at least on the internet, it's fifty quid. On the same website, Chaos Space Marines Vashtor the Archifane forty eight quid. Yeah, you know, it's one oh. model. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, is it? Yeah. It's, it's not even a big model. So. It's, it's just a normal, average size model, but fifty quid. Uh, don't get me wrong, like the quality you... is different. And we're not, I'm not saying it's, it's the same quality, it's not. But mm. you can get an entire army of one thing and one model in another. You can have a really. That's why I've moved into one page rules, because I'm just like, yeah. I'm weaning myself away. I love 10th edition, don't get me wrong, it's good, it plays yeah. well. It, it, uh, I'm not drained after I've played it, but it's still 40k, yeah. and there are certain aspects of 40k that I just don't like. You yeah. know, um, stratagems being one. And. Yeah. Moving away from that, there's always a gotcha, and every said that it was it was stratagems. Then eighth, we, we we got away from that for a little bit. Then they, then the codexes came out, and they were a gotcha in themselves. And now we've got yeah. the stratagems coming out, and now we're going to get both stratagems and oh my god, right? So yeah. with one page rules, it's just like just just get your fucking models and play. Yeah. And, have fun. <laughs> and, well, and that's, there that's, is a game there. Nice. There's a game there, and it, and it functions and it works. And people are like there's only yeah. there's only finite model. There's only finite rules. Yes, but like. There's rules within rules. There are ways to make really powerful combinations, and you just have fun. Yeah. There's no, you know. So I, I'm, I, I'm gradually weaning yeah. myself away from Games Workshop. I think at the moment. Oh, dude! Every, every single person that I either online, so I'm, you know, Warlord Games probably owes me like a fucking sticker or something, like a well done, you know, mm. I, because I must have got at least a, that I know of directly a hundred people into my action at this point. Mm. And every single one of them who I've either played across the table or I've just said, like, look, just go and play a game. So if your mate is offering you a game, yeah, go, with go it. and play it. It's it's like it'll they'll be like, Oh, I don't want to give up my whole like my whole day to play when it dude, it'll take you two hours. Like mm. you can pop in on your lunch break if you know if your boss isn't watch, pop, watching too closely and fucking have a game of all action, you know what I mean? Mm. And every single one of those people has come back and they've been like, you know, they've been chatting to me in the Discord or on the stream or they're just you know in, in real life and they've just been like, oh my god god once i was blind now i can see yeah like it's it's eye-opening the game is quicker the game is more fun it's so simple you can learn it in about 10 minutes but just because you can learn it in 10 minutes doesn't it doesn't mean that you know the whole thing in 10 minutes you mm -hmm. just know the fundamentals of the oh, game yeah. when's the last time you could teach someone a game of 40k in 10 minutes i mean th this is the thing right and, I, and I, i'd say this when i was working there it, i had to dumb down the rules for certain players yeah. not because you're you're stupid but because i don't have the time like i i yeah. can't even if, if all we would play with was the starter box set, and even with the starter yeah. box set, I'd be like, "Look, we can we can play a few games here. It's fine." But I'd always need to dumb down the rules, and it'd be like literally, like you know, uh, I I do one page rules in my head as we went, and that yeah. was just challenging to do when you're trying to be entertaining and make sure someone's having a good time. Yeah. If I've got to do that for your game, it's not a very good game. Yeah, at least it's not I very mean, well written, you know. A hundred percent. I think one of the 
one of the things that I think has been lost over 9th and 10th edition is how convoluted the game has become. And 10th edition is still, it's streamlined, but it, I think that term simplified, not simple, is pretty accurate because it's definitely, yeah, all my stuff's on my data card, but it's mm -hmm. still pretty complicated. The bigger strength of 8th edition was you could learn it in about half an hour. Yeah. You know, you, you could, it was super easy to get into, and the big and, and and that's something I think has been lost. And it's the bigger strength of bot action. A guy, whether it doesn't matter if you are a German guy running around with a rifle, or you're an American guy running around with a rifle, or you're a British guy running around with a rifle. A man with a rifle is a man with a rifle. It's not a bolt rifle. It's not a las rifle. It's not a shotgun catapult. It's not even mm. you know a thousand different standard infantry weapons that all do the same shit but with slightly different things. Mm. No, it's a fucking rifle. And that's what makes bot action. And, and you, you, you see people like twig this in the in their first game. Because I must have done probably like three or four dozen intro games to bot action now. And um, and so I was like, okay, so what does this gun do? I'm like, that's an LMG. It's like, okay, how many shots is that? And then they'll see like another squad. And I have like a slightly different looking light machine gun. You know, if you're for history fans out there, it's like the difference between like a Bren machine gun and maybe like a Vickers K machine gun. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll be like, oh, what about this one? I'm like, it's a light machine gun. They'll be like, oh, but it looks different. And like, yeah, it still fires four shots because it's a light machine gun. It's just an aesthetic <laughs> difference. And it's, every 40k player that does that, it's like you can see the spark behind their eyes go off. You yeah. can see the fucking light bulb appear the off the of their head. Yeah, and they're just like, okay. And within one, every, and I'm not exaggerating here, every person I've talked about action to, and I've, you know, I've taught my mates, uh, Kid Jack, you know, and I've taught him, and I've taught, you know, I've taught, fuck it, my missus plays for action with me occasionally. She's mm -hmm. never touched 40k. Mm -hmm. And um, every single one of those people, whether they're the ultra casual to the ultra hardcore game, has picked what action up inside of one turn. I, I will say this, like, it's like, um... Warlord Games, sponsor me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you should better, like, Jesus Christ. Um, I want to play it now. That, that, you know, I started this talking about like, are, are they all, are they all Nazis over there? And I'm like, yeah, we want to play this game. Um, but like, yeah, I, I guess it's it's one of those where where you, you, if you're not if you're not feeling fatigued and bogged down on that your on that your entire day is going on this one game, i.e. Yeah. 40k. Yeah. I've had games of 40k when I know I could have played better, I could have been tactically better, or I could have put more thought into it, but I couldn't be bothered. Yeah. Because of how long oh, the game was going. And for all of oh, the rules and all the gotchas that are in the game. But when I play a game like Bolt Action or like One Page Rules, I know I'm engaged for 90 minutes. So yeah. I know anything yeah. that I do here could swing the game. And yeah. I'm completely engaged and I'm completely there. And that's the one thing I will say of 10th edition. I started to get that feeling with 40k, but it's still not there. It's just a lot better yeah. than what it was in 9th. It's, it doesn't it take more time now. That that feeling won't go away until the you know what is it the uh, the the golden cow of I go you go goes away. Yes. Yeah. 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 But, but in forty k, you spend half of your game watching your opponent do shit and just yeah. being like, you're 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 literally half of the game. You are a spectator. I don't know why, and, why they still do that. I don't know why. Yeah. I I don't get it. At, at this in, point, it's stubbornness. At this point, it's them saying, well, this is what we do that other people don't. It's brand, right? But, but like that but that's the point, Games Workshop. Right? That's the point. There's a reason why no one else does it, you know. Like, if you if you had a car company and you say, "Well, our airbags don't go off," that's Brilliant. us. That's Ford. Like you know, that's no, no. You good enough for Dad. Would it's good enough for me. Yeah, exactly. Ford would close down. Our boots don't have laces. It's like yeah. yeah these seatbelt things yeah. will never catch on. Exactly. I mean, that's yeah. So yeah, I. I I would be very interested to see how 40k would play if there was alternating. Um, it's not balanced for that, of course. I did try it uh, for like an hour, and it was just a shit show because it was like, yeah, it's not balanced for that. You know, the game, the game needs to be made for alternating actions yeah. at the very start or not at all. So it yeah. doesn't really work. But yeah, that I mean, would be the hardest. Of, when we talk about hard resets, that would be the hardest of resets. That, that would be should have happened with eight. Blowing up the old, yeah. If it came with eighth, the old world, you know, style if, it, of reset. if it came up with eighth we'd have been done by now and it would be the yeah. biggest game on the market well it already is but like it would be not just big but but like it would be um Colossal. respected as the biggest game on the market yeah. not just the biggest because it sells most it, everyone would be like that's the biggest and probably one of the best games on the market yeah now everyone yeah. goes everyone likes space marine so that's why that's bigger and it's not you know 
it, it, yeah, it just comes in on that. Anyway, I'm gonna have to head off because I'm getting a, I'm, I'm like an hour later than us. I said I was gonna. No, be no problem, no worries. Man. Um, but thanks for that. Thanks for having me on. It's been awesome, and I've really enjoyed it. We'll have to do it again sometime. And uh, absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll play some video games. We'll do we'll do something in the future. We'll we'll sort something out. Absolutely, man. Well, just uh, you know, I am doing a lot more collabs going forward now. So mm -hmm. consider. You know, I've, I just want to say I've really enjoyed it. It's been great. It's been nice to just, like you said, just chat to like a regular guys, like bro down. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, consider an open door. You know, if you ever, if you ever got a spare moment, you want to do a collab. That's excellent. We'll that's do absolutely man. fine with me. I'll, I'll be on, and um, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I want to get you and Alter Circle and room together so you can have a <sighs> have a frank conversation. <laughs> that would oh, be okay. hilarious. I think I might. They might. My body would be instantly preserved by the amount of salt that, that guy <laughs> would project out. With. And I'd love it. I'd be like, I just, I just sit there, just like listening to it. And I'd yeah. be like, oh, it is therapeutic, man. It is therapeutic. Yeah. The thing is, though, like, like, like when you, when you're, when you're talking, like, you do get, you realize that you, that, you, you logic through what you're pissed off about. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And there's something quite therapeutic about that, which is why I love calling him where, where we have a little chat. Yeah. It's like, oh. I know I, I can't I'm I'm pissed off about this, but I, can't, I don't know why. And you'll go, well, let me tell you why. And I'm like, oh, yeah. like a really thick Australian accent. And I'm like, oh right, yeah, yeah that yeah, is yeah. what. Yeah, that's what I would. I, that, that's the thing. It's like you've got a boil on your back, you can't pop. And he goes, there you go, bang. Oh, Mac that's is, what it was. Mac, Mac is mind blowers. Mac that's is mind is. blowers. Yeah. <laughs> you should uh, use that for like a series. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna thank you off. very much. Yeah, man. no, it's no, it's Morty and Manor. Always a pleasure. And yeah, I will I will hit you up. We'll do something else in the near future. No worries, dude. Catch you later. All right, man. See you later. Bye. 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 All right. That was my uh, conversation with Mordian. Uh, we're nearly two hours in now. Sorry I didn't do an intro. It was mainly uh, uh, only one of us could really do one. Uh, he did offer me the chance to do an intro, but I said no. It's fine because I thought it'd be, it would like really freak you out if you had somebody else doing an intro for once on the channel. So that is Mordian. Um, he's really, really cool, guys. Go and, go and check him out. He's... He reached out to me. I didn't. I didn't reach out to him. He was good enough to come and come to me and say, "Hey, you know, I'm a smaller YouTuber." He didn't say this, but I am a smaller YouTuber than him. He came out. He outstretched the hand and said, "Let's have a little chat." Brilliant. Really enjoyed that. It was awesome. And I'm finding out that uh, there are no enemies in um, on on the 40k sphere on YouTube. Everybody that I want to meet a dickhead at one stage, I will. There will be one. I will find him. There will be one. Uh, but everyone so far has been absolutely tremendous. What a, what an amazing bunch of human beings. And uh, Mordian's one of them. So go and give his channel a like. Go and make sure that you give him some support. And yeah, if you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below. The Patreon button is also down below. We do have the prize draw on Sunday. Where I'll be streaming, doing a bit of stuff. And, and we'll give away £50 worth of Composite Games miniatures. Love your long time. This was an extra long two hour video and I might make the Friday video from now on an extra long one. We'll see because next next week's gonna be huge. Um, very, very long hobby nightmare. So, love your long time. I will speak to you on Sunday. Have a wonderful Saturday tomorrow and I'll see you then. Have a good one. Bye now.